If Murray had supported the show, I'd be less sick of podcasts. Yeah, there goes. The blubbity bar. Sending out good vibes. The blubbity bar. Good vibes. The bar. Good vibes. The blubbity bar. Good vibes. Good vibes. Underneath breaths of deep gratitude and prayers for guidance and protection. And put on a didgeridoo and shamanic drumming track. Shivers or vibrations and stuff like that. Right, man. I, I In the 90s, the late 90s, I worked for Levi Strauss, and that was one of the first companies I remember moving to, you know, to Mexico. And people were just devastated, you know. Some people had been there like 30 years. Okay, guys. Welcome back to the Grand America Show. We are going to be chatting with the odd man out, J.R. Hodge, a little bit later. JR, who shot JR from Dallas? I think I made that joke on the live stream as well. It's the only one I got. Uh, fun show. He's got a podcast himself called The Oddcast. Fun little podcast. I haven't listened to it. Yeah, it's new. pretty new. Yeah. Have you listened to it yet? Yeah, a little, I listened to it before the show, of course. Oh, did you? Of course yeah. you did. I found him on Instagram. It was just, it was just, I knew it would be a good chat, and it was fun. Graham Go-Getter Dunlop over here, always prepared for a podcast interview. Yeah, try to be. I am not usually unprepared. It's okay. Hours. Yin and yang. Hours doing that. Well, luckily it's all stuff we're interested in. Otherwise, that'd be really tough. Uh, could you <laughs> oh, imagine? Gosh. Imagine, how to, imagine having to prepare for like mainstream television. Oh, it'd be the worst job ever. It'd be so painful. Meet all the you, lies. Captain. Like, I got to prepare to say all these lies. Oh, my God. You probably don't think they're lies. They must know it. They can't. They have to know some of it. It's just bullshit. Think? So much bullshit. Thank God for. Thank God for books. For, you know, who I was going to say Ricky Gervais. Oh, your buddy. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was so well said. I just oh, laughing. Any chance it's a ruse? Yeah, but it it's a good still one. funny. It was a good yeah. one. They, you needed to see. I mean, what what, what would the ruse now be? Your mic's making a what would the sound. ruse be? I don't like that mic of yours. What would the ruse be? Get us all to watch the Golden Globes. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> We're getting the other half of the, yeah, the half country of society to, to watch the Golden yeah. Globes. Yeah, yeah maybe. So they yeah. get the messaging and whatever that yeah. might be. Yeah. Of course, I did watch it. But is it that it important? Like, I think that's pretty heavy, it heavy was. handed just to get people to watch a, a show that's it, it was pretty over the top. Like the last like 30 seconds. Not over the top. The it last, wasn't like, over the top. It was fantastic, but it was. There was, spicy. Oh, oh, spicy? Yeah. I think over the top is my word for spicy. Because over the top is like when you jump over I just the top think of the trench, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know where that came from. I just don't think. How dare you correct me when you don't know? I, well, I know what it means <laughs> to me, and it's not over the top. It means spicy. Over the top would be like <laughs> to you too means, much. To, to you, it means spicy. Let's see, over the top. We got, could be right, a trucker decides to mend his relationship with his son. Oh, it's going to be, that's the Rocky oh, that, movie. The, that's that, the Sylvester Stallone movie. That, so you got to, see, this is the problem with Hollywood. Every time you type in something, it just pulls up the, the movie that was called it. To an excessive mm -hmm. or exaggerated degree. Or over the parapet of a trench and into battle. There you go. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so see, I disagree with the first definition. That that's not. A, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> the spicy. It was awesome. It was spicy. You got to stop saying spicy. <laughs> I've heard that multiple times from other people, and it fits. You think so? Yeah. Spicy. Do you want to hear what Brian Lord said about it that I posted on Instagram? Did you just all the copy from? paste it? Yeah, I know. That's where he said spicy. Yeah. So you got spicy from Brian? I did. Brian, stop <laughs> saying spicy, bro. <laughs> anyway, the last 30 seconds were great. Yeah. The end was my favorite. When he burned Apple. No, no, no. When he said, just come up here, get your little award, thank your God, and thank everybody, and fuck off. No, he Don't get all political. The whole Apple Don't thing. get all political. He's yeah. like, Apple made a movie about this. Meanwhile, they're making phones with sweatshops in China. And uh, and then 
someone said boo or whatever, and he's like, well, you guys all act like you're so like, woke. Shut up. I don't care. <laughs> Shut up. I don't care. It was Interesting. fantastic. Yeah. It was good. It was, I was laughing. I, I was fucking laughing for sure. Everyone, everyone looked shocked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was neat to see. I'd like to see more of Your that. Your friend, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. They start, they start booing and he's to, like, I don't care. Did you, you had to fly your own planes here. <laughs> anyway. I'm sure people know what we're talking about. We didn't give it a lot of context, but. Did you put a link fun. in the show notes? For that? It's, no, I'm not. It's not on YouTube. It's, no, it's on everywhere. Twitter. It's not on YouTube. YouTube's, YouTube excuse, scrubbed it already? Well, it's illegal. What? It's a copyright infringement. Well, it's all over the internet. I mean. I know, but it can't be on YouTube because it's copyright infringement. Oh, boy. It sneaks into Twitter because Twitter's just like the wild west. <laughs> like Twitter's supposed to be porn free too, and I don't even follow porn people, but I just can't go. Really? Like, oh yeah, there's porn on Twitter constantly. Oh yeah, like you'll you'll be scrolling along, and all of a sudden, boom, a dick pounding into an ass. No, oh yeah, dude. Come there's, on. There's uh, all all flavors of pornography just huh. show up in my feed because, because I must why? follow some people that are retweeting some weird shit. Tin for a hat, probably. Could be him. He's not helping. <laughs> but we went through that phase where we were following everybody all the time. So we follow like 24,000 people. So That's mixed weird. in there, there's wow. some people retweeting porn quite a bit. Mm. I usually use that time to unfollow them so that I don't have to see. Because, I mean, I don't want to come across dicks in my feed. I'm sorry if that makes me weird. But when I'm just scrolling through my Twitter feed, I don't want to see dicks. Well, usually they're going into something. You don't have to focus. I, I don't on want to the, see that. You don't have either. to focus on the phallus part. Just focus on the. No, it's a lot of just dicks. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Big dicks. Okay. That's, <laughs> a, that's good. We don't have to talk about that. <laughs> what are you, dickhead? Your brain on porn. This no, a, not at all. I just. I'm enough. not a porn guy. I good. don't need that's to good. see it in my Twitter. We got an email about that. About the somebody's recommending we, uh, or maybe it was Watch in the chat. No, that we oh. have that guy on. That there's a book, Your Brain on Porn, that's supposed to be very powerful. Oh, really? Very interesting. And it's all tied with addiction and all that as well. Because it's interesting it's in my Buddhist, in my porn, Buddhist I, recovery. I got off porn like a year ago and I just. Yeah, my Buddhist yeah. recovery group, there's, you know, I mean, it's for people with recovery of all, of all things, right? And it's interesting how technology is, is, is allowing us to become addicted or it's helping us become addicted to all kinds of stuff. You know, your phone. and Not that I ever had a porn yeah. problem, but I just stopped using that if I needed to facilitate myself. Just use my imagination. Wow, good for you. Yeah. You still in the porn? Nah. <laughs> nah. That was pretty not in the middle. Not something I want to talk about here. So what do you got? I'll wait for that episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then we'll talk about it. Yeah, I'm being bashful. Yeah. Uh, what do you got? Uh, well, I mean, let's talk about the last episode. What was the last episode? It was uh, Celia Hatch came into the studio. We talked oh, about CE5 and all that. We did the big well, outro, and that was for Strassman, Rick Strassman. We did a big outro? Did we? I don't know. It was know. an intro. Intro, I said. Yes. No, you said outro. 100%. <clears throat> and, uh, go ahead. What's this? What's Bingo Bango? Bingo, oh, you're doing social... Well, you just asked me if I had something, and then you just override me and then play your own jingle and get into your own segment. So. Well, because there's a bunch of feedback okay, right, on it. Right, right. So you reminded me. I know, I know, I know. I'm just plugging it in. I know how it works. I know how Darren works. You know how I operate? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's go to, we'll go to this one first. You guys need to listen to Chris Knowles, read and watch everything he recommends to you. Wow. I was embarrassed for Graham and Darren. You guys run a conspiracy podcast. I don't know if you run a conspiracy podcast. And haven't read any of the classics. Darren, put down Marquez and start reading Eco Wilson Tool, Vunaget Adam Curtis. I just bought Chris Knowles' book based on his recommendations. Um, I, I'm going to just keep reading what I'm reading. I don't want to read conspiracy books, I don't think. A lot of those aren't necessarily conspiracy books. I mean, we've read a lot of them. I mean, there's the Paled Horse, Pale Horse, and all that. Uh, there's all, there's that all book those, is you know. so dry. Yeah. <laughs> the audiobook, yeah. the self narrated audiobook. But it's hard. Honestly, Once you hear a lot about certain books, you, you know, kind of don't want to read them because you already, you've heard it so much about them. Like, I'd rather read the other books. Yeah. We talk to everyone who's read them. 
Uh, hmm. 5% of people don't feel any effect from psychedelics. 5% of people are sociopaths slash psychopaths. I wonder if there's a link or if someone can be so narcissistic that the ego just won't dissolve. That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That is good. There's inside joke there. Is this YouTube you're checking out? Or? Yeah. We got... Okay. Uh... Chris Knowles, Chris Knowles. Maybe there isn't any feedback. I thought there was a big, huge comment on her episode. Oh, it was a Rick Strassman episode, right? That's so, right. That's what that's you're right. looking for, yeah. Uh, da, da. Hmm. I, have a, I have a synchronicity with uh, Celia Hatch for after the episode and some emails that I got. It's kind of interesting. Well, I can't find it. Okay, well, I'll get into this. Oh, here we got oh, this. Let's read go. this at least. All right. I could be wrong, but the but Sunset, the magazine from Justin Synchro, is not obscure. AAA sends it out to everyone in California who buys their auto insurance, and nobody reads it, so it gets <laughs> tossed into the recycling by millions. Still a good Synchro, though. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. <laughs> 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 and the fact that it was from 2014, that's pretty crazy. Was it from 2014? Yeah. I'm not going to read those. Those are just mean. Uh, you guys are awesome. I'm so happy I found you guys the first time you were on tinfoil hat. To be honest, I look up to you guys and wish I could be more positive. But listening to your podcast has really helped me get through some rough nights. I'm a 34-year-old single dad who lives in Florida and struggles with opiate addiction since I was 18. I've been raising my son alone the last six years when his mom left for good, and now I've been on subutexthy, whatever, sub, sub, subutexthy? I don't know, some, some opiate, I suppose. The last six years, and it's just as bad. Anyways, I just wanted to let you know your show has kept me home listening many of nights when I really would just wanted to go out and get high. Anyways, I donate when I can, and hopefully you'll get to read this and know you guys are really helping people. But if but if not, it helped me just to write this down. Nice. Peace. I wonder if you listened to the Recovery Dharma book in our free feed. I've had a lot of good feedback on that. That was helping people. Hopefully it did. So if you haven't, check it out. Check Recovery it out. Dharma back a couple months ago in our recovery, in our feed. Not feed. I don't need to know about mitochondria to read a trial or a study by someone who knows more about that stuff than George does. I was on the vaccine debate show. Uh, psychedelic supplier. Interesting comment. I don't know. I know I don't believe them project what they want because I am the manifester of my own life no matter what. I'd like to think positively I felt bad things around me, but it went away with, uh, it doesn't really make sense. Yeah. You should probably pre-read some of those. Yeah. Well, he's talking about, I think entities. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. I think I know what you're actually talking about and I hope I'm wrong. No more comments. Okay. So that pro that was probably just perfect to lead me into what I was trying to explain with Segway. Celia about not being so sure about the et phenomena right now and or ever and you know and protecting yourself from it as well if right? it's opening now yourself it would be up, ever, op it? opening yourself up to that no it doesn't that doesn't mean that at all no no do you think it's worse now than it would have been 40 years ago yeah interesting yeah, why it could be look at the state of disclosure i, mean, I hate you mike so i was uh I was thinking afterwards, after the show, I was thinking, should I just let Celia know if she hasn't listened to that show that we did with, with, uh, with Reed Summers, right? About his dad's channeling and all that, Allies of Humanity. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I was hesitating. I didn't really want to send it to her. So anyway, went to bed. The next morning I woke up and I, for some reason I had it in my head, I'm like, I'm going to send her that show, read some, see what she thinks about it. She should know it's channeling. She's running a channeling group as well. See what she thinks about the other side of that, uh, you know, the allies of humanity, but it's like, be careful of ET, right? Warnings of contact. 
<clears throat> and then she sent me, I woke up to this text from her about the uh, protection, protection um, invocation. And it's, uh, I'll, I'll just read it to you here. Yeah. This is from Shelly, actually, the person that we were talking to about. I am divine, divine light in form. I send this light out and fill this room. I fill this building. I fill this space in the circle for 10 miles. I'm completely and totally safe from all entities, beings, realms, and dimensions in any time, in any manner, in every reality. I know I'm safe. I'm fully connected, seeking guidance and counsel. I ask that all communication be from 100% pure light. That's kind of what we were talking about. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. I got a, I got a text from her right first thing in the morning. So I sent her back saying... Um, you know, that, hey, this is the one that we were talking about was uh, from E.T. It was Reed Summers, and his dad's been channeling for decades and wonder what she thought about it. There's a bunch of books and sites and all that. So then I get in, this, then I check my emails, uh, and I haven't heard, like, we, we did that episode a while ago, right? Which one? Reed Summers? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I get this email that says, we have been duped. I'm like, what is this all about? I'm thinking, I wonder if this guy... I wonder if this guy listened to our show last night live. It's from John. John. I'll just say John. He says, Hi, reread Summer's appearance on your show. Please see my emails below. That's kind of weird. We've been duped by Reed Summers. Are you following along? Yeah. I think you're playing with chords and stuff. And well, I'm getting this ready to go for the next segment, but I don't understand who got duped. Well, this is the email. To- this is the email description. I'm about to read it to you, oh, but it's so about Reed Summers. I just noticed it. I sent that to her about Reed Summers. Yeah, yeah. I get the little I get, synchro. Okay, okay, I get the yeah. little synchro. It's not even readable. But I'm more interested on who he pretty, thinks got. It's pretty important to me that day. All right, morning. I'll give you a seven. Okay, that's pretty good. I'll even take a five, just because that's right, not fair to give me a seven. Okay. Well, I like other people you. have better ones. That's true. It's to do with us. I'm more interested about the 5.4. Okay, I'll read you the email about why we've been duped. Okay, I thought I was supposed to know why we got duped so, already. No, he, so he sent this to somebody else, and he's forwarding it to me. Hi, please see my email below. So he's referencing another email. About the real so, okay, origin yeah. of who UFOs. Is, who is the first email to? To the secure team. When the UFO and consciousness show came to Manchester in 2017, it took place across the road from where I'd witnessed the hovering UFO in 1999. Given my own faith journey, this was no coincidence. I had a letter on the subject published in the local secular press in 2018 on the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. A book I can recommend is UFOs, What on Earth by John Weldon, from 1975, as Satan is still Prince of the Sky at the moment. Other good sources, I believe, are the Sears, Wendy Alec, her books, The Fall of Lucifer, Jonathan Kahn, his book, The Oracle, etc., Lance Walnuff, and his book, President Trump, God's Wrecking Ball in the White House. I believe this is, this is or the last decade, and there's plenty to happen in it. You'll find it informative. So then, do you want me to read the other one then? This is like sure. where it gets into a lot of detail. So this, because this is the other side of the story, the, the religious, the devil, the evil versus good side of the story. Mm-hmm. The de- demonic aspect, I should have said, not the devil. The so devil now, so he, Georgia. so he sent this other email here. <clears throat> this is to report sightings. For 20 years, I believed in alien life on other planets. I witnessed a UFO myself hovering over a chemical plant in 1999. And I went to to a talk by Colonel Holt about his UFO experience in Suffolk. I'm a Christian believer for the same period and I've had plenty of experiences of the Holy Spirit in my life and believe in the apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary at Majori, etc. I can't pronounce that word. Majigori, maybe. The Father has placed me on this mission of being a mediatrix between God and man. She appeared to the visionary Veronica at Bayside, USA between 70 and 94, and among subjects covered were UFOs. A couple of quotes. Here's your UFO quote. 
Want to uh, do the jingle? Uh, hey, you wanted it. You said people well, were missing yeah, the UFO I'm fucking quote. not prepared for just a random UFO <laughs> quote in the middle of another segment. But, <laughs> especially when I was in the middle of the social media segment, and I don't have my iPad, and I'm working off of my phone for everything. And doing the good. app is new. You're doing good. UFOs, as you call them, are used by Satan and other demons from hell as transports to confuse and confound mankind into thinking there is alien life in the universe. The only creation of the Father has been given in the book of Love and Life, the Bible. We are now living through the, so that's the, that's the quote there. We are now living through the book of Revelations. No, no. These are the end times. And here's another quote. In this final battle, because of the sins of mankind, there are many agents of hell now loose on the earth. There's another quote for you. Isn't that what he was saying? I don't know who said the quote. Wasn't Reed saying that too, though? Kind of? Uh, I don't think it was. No, I don't think it was a demonic aspect as much as just uh, untrustworthy. Listen. In my opinion, you can't be taking the Bible for much. That's not to say you can't take the religion for much. But the Bible is just written down by people. Translated a couple of times. It just seems it depends like, on which Bible you're talking about. I which guess. but no. Does it? Yeah. The book of Revelation. We is, need to have a Bible person on. The book of Revelations is different than like the new King James version, right? I think. Well, no. Technically, there's just a bunch. There's the scrolls that they found that were allowed to read, and the ones that were not. <laughs> <laughs> we are now living through the. Oh, well, okay. The devil we need knows to learn Latin. The devil knows his time is short, you and should. so when the Christian church is raptured, news media's will report to those left behind that a mass UFO abduction has occurred. To explain the disappearance of these people, covering up the divine act from you. And as in surveys, at least half those surveyed believe in alien life, abductions, etc. Thanks to the UFO phenomena, most will probably accept this explanation. It's kind of like the Project Bluebeam. No chance. No this thing. and other like, subjects oh, okay. covering the end times can be found under directives on the Shrine website. The warning, great miracle, and chastisements to come. As ever in this spiritual battle, pray, prayer is key. Please don't let the evil one fool mankind. You know, I have trouble. I'll link to that website in the show notes. Thinking that the omnipotent God needs me to believe in him specifically before he'll save me. Wouldn't it just be like if I was being a good person? Does that make me redeemable? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's, maybe that, maybe they're just tied in together. Maybe that belief in, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it's an analogy for that. You know, following the 12 commandments. The 12 commandments <laughs> make a lot of sense. There's 10. There's 10. 10. Well, there, there could be 12. I could throw a couple in. We could make some. <laughs> Thou shall not be a fucker. <clears throat> don't be a cunt. Um, is there 10? It's the 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> There's you... 12 or something else. <laughs> What, 12 steps? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Moving right on. I was derailing. <laughs> what uh, else you got? Have you done that? <sighs> that? Oh, yeah. I got something from the chats, which was pretty funny. Is that segment over? Yeah, the segment's over. Yes. <laughs> so people know... Are you are you going back to the, the social ge- social uh, media? All over the web. Well, I got a couple people trying to get me back on WhatsApp. But other than that, what do you mean back on the no, social like media? No, like in the segment. Are you doing are you back to did you fix something and you're back to social media or no? Oh, that's the CAC stuff. Okay. All right. So let me so this is the synchro. I'm so I think the website I made looks like a social media homepage. Though. I don't know what you're you were fiddling around over there, and I was just wondering why you don't have it all it's ready to go. Big. It is ready to go, you fuck. <clears throat> if people put stuff in the chats, the chats is the best place it's, to get us. It's it's open to be read on the air. Everything in the so, chats. So so don't put anything in the chats if you don't want. Don't it read, read anything air. I put in the chats on the <laughs> air though. 
I'm immune from that. Really? This yeah. is how it works? So yeah. now I'm going to have a bunch of people requesting to be immune from... No, no. no I'm not going to take people... I, I'm not going to take quotes from people in the regular channel. Nothing in Congress. Like, not in Congress. In the, that's a, a the channel. Sub the channels channel. are open. And the no sub-channel is like if you put stuff in... And no Richard Parker <laughs> on the show either. If you put stuff in synchros and, and the yeah. Grime America show... Book there, recommendations. Book, yeah, that, that type of stuff. I mean, we could do a whole... Segment on all the book, great book recommendations in there. Oh man, I'm so. so this is from Pasca Curry. That's uh, Poop Slinger. Is it? Yeah, his name's Cow. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife left me over two months ago after eight years together. Tried working stuff out. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, this is kind of a sad synchro, but but she kind of ended up sadly calling it quits two Thursdays ago. Went on a dating app. Doesn't take a long. Eh? Bumble for validation and some shit. Just hated feeling alone and rejected. A lot of shit that might not be needed for this story. I was clear. We love you, buddy. I was clear I'm a mess. That I just needed self aware people, okay, with depression and the like to talk to and distract myself with. Ended up chatting with a nice woman who asked me if I'd join her to watch Ohio versus U of M at 11 a.m. After talking online, it seemed we were like-minded and would be able to hang out and be real. After chatting a bit, she mentioned having heart surgery at 28 and that she wants to but doesn't trust skydiving. We both talked about having a friend with an airplane after some other sky discussion and moved on to something else. Eventually, she mentioned a friend who just became a pilot. I stopped dead there. My best friend had told me a week before he got a job with Sky West. And just posted on the socials today. I asked if he was the same friend with the plane. And then she showed her a picture of my buddy. <laughs> she, she freaked, or I guess he showed, then showed her a picture of my buddy. She freaked a bit. It was, it was, uh. She probably she thought you were a was. total stalker. <laughs> Turns out it was his old roommate. She knew half the people I know in this town. She knew my ex-wife before. Didn't have the best of words. Talked about the old times where we barely missed meeting each other. I know of her only in stories as Crazy Becky. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who got shit-faced and stripped a lot. <laughs> My ex-wife even had some of her clothes somehow. <laughs> what happened next? Oh, that's it. That's it. Oh, oh that's question. good, eh? Yeah, we're going to have to we're gonna have, have to find out part the two. End of the story. I want part, part two, two on that one. Yeah. yeah. When you start like really digging into the times when you just about met. Yeah. I'll give you a. I was at that party too, but I. I'll give you a gram seven. Gram seven. All right. Since you went down to a five. Well, I hope you find love, Poop Slinger. We love you, buddy. Yep. Join the chats or send He's emails. He's in the chats. No, I'm just, just saying in general. Chats. In general oh. for people. Well, everybody should, should join the chats because that's where you. I mean, you're not going to solve your problems in the chats. I'll tell you that. Your problems are going to keep coming, but. You'll have a nice little community in there of like-minded people. There's a lot of love flying around. It's one of the happiest places I know. I don't do a lot of social media, if any, other than this little bit that I have to do for the podcast. Um, other than that, I'm in the chats. That's where I get my fill of whatever you fucks are getting on Facebook. With very little toxicity. Almost none. Yeah. Every once in a while, the t- politics eke in, and there's a little battle between... Usually Truffaut will piss a couple people off, too. You know? Oh, it's he's not pretty, just Michael. He's pretty, you know. <laughs> we love you, Michael. He's pretty gruff sometimes. There's a couple gruffy. Don't incident. take him gruffy. He, he comes across gruffy, but he's not. He's not. He's, he's the nice nicest guy. guy in the world. He just seems gruffy. <laughs> <laughs> he has gruffy thumbs. So I got a quote. I got to I gotta do like this quote, The Octopus of Global Control, which is uh, getting rave reviews from some people who, uh, who read are it? starting to actually read it now. Ah, for fuck's sakes. I don't have that quote. Oh, I do. No, I don't. Shit. I have this one. Down and Graham going deep. It's a profound you have a quote of a week. Well, I don't have the other jingle on my phone. I wasn't prepared for it. Oh, okay. Sorry. People got two uh, rehashed jingles. And it's, you know, it's been a while since we played the social media jingle Saint, too. St. Pauli was saying he was listening to the black budget feed as well. With no, he the, didn't uh, like how the it reading ended. of the F word. <laughs> it just stops. No, no. He, I think he was reading the new one maybe. Or did you put the new one in there? 
I put a new one in recently, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and the and he's reading this Octopus of Global Control. He says, his eyes have been opened, and it's because of these two books that would never have been on my radar if it wasn't for the show. Phenomenal reading and great work from both of you. Thanks, St. Pauli. He we'll says, be there in a couple he of years. He says, it's frightening how the same names keep popping up in American history. Bush, Kissinger, Rockefeller, Brzezinski. It's crazy. And it's even more frightening to see how America survives and thrives in being in a state of perpetual war. Speaking of that, I got a quote here from the Octopus of Global Control. This is quite a long one, Darren. We'll Strap see you in. in a year and a half, buddy. I got to try and read this in a in a tone of voice that shows how. Are you going to start doing voices? No. Nope. Oh. Clearly, no longer can a dictator count on East West confrontation to stymie. Actually, should I? This is from. Should I? Can I give you the year that this was read? And then you'll do it in an old timey voice? No, no, no. 1990. Yeah, well, 1942. 1990. All right. September 11th, 1990. Clearly no longer. Bush. Which one? Senior. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly no longer can a dictator count on East-West confrontation to stymie concerted United Nations acts, action against aggression. A new partnership of nations has begun. We stand today at a unique and extraordinary moment. The crisis in the Persian Gulf, as grave as it is, also offers a rare opportunity to move forward toward a historic period of cooperation. Out of these troubled... Team up and fucking up some countries. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order, can emerge. A new era, free from the threat of terror, stronger in the pursuit of justice, and more secure in the quest for peace. An era in which the nations of the world, east and west, north and south, can prosper and live in harmony. A hundred generations of search for this elusive path to peace Path, path to peace while well, a thousand <laughs> wars raged across the span of human endeavor today that new world is struggling to be born a world quite different from the one we've known a world where the rule of law supplants the rule of the jungle a rule <clears throat> a world in which nations recognize the shared responsibility for freedom and justice a world where the strong respect the rights of the weak this is the vision that i shared with president gorbachev in helsinki he and other leaders from Europe, the Gulf, and around the world understand that how we manage this crisis today could shape the future for generations to come. The test we face is great, and so are the stakes. This is the first assault on the new world that we seek, the first test of our mettle. Had we not responded to this first provocation with clarity of purpose, if we do not continue to demonstrate our determination it would be a signal to actual and potential despots around the world. Once again, Americans have stepped forward. At this very moment, they serve together with Arabs, Europeans, Asians, and Africans in defense of the principle of the dream of a new world order. George H. W. Bush, former president, United States of America, former CIA. Fuck George Bush. Unreal. Pretty fucked up. Uh, and... <clears throat> Uh, you know, just a little thing. It sounds good on the surface in a way. You know, you could take it like, oh, that's uh, that's great. And look what's happened since then. I predict Lebanon and Iran are about to be rebelized. Lebanon too? Well, Lebanon's the only other one on the West Clark 7 list that isn't fucked up. Yet. I think they've given up on that list. Come on. So. The yeah. other five are done. Yeah. So the only two left are Iran and Lebanon. They're not. They're not going to continue. Omar the list is Lebanon, out there. Omar thinks Lebanon's about to get fucked up. The list is out there. It's too crazy for people. That people are all gonna, done except one, two, two. Well, that's not going to happen. You don't think we're going to fuck up Iran? No. Didn't we just like fuck up Iran a little bit? A little bit more. Did you see that meme? No. Kim Jong Il in the in the classroom, putting his hand up. Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump. I no longer identify as a general. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You didn't think that was funny? I didn't see, I don't get it. Because he just whacked that general, the, oh. the guy from the Iranian general, right? So Kim's like, oh, I no longer identify as a general. Oh, does Kim think he's a general? I don't, it, that's not the point of the joke. Oh, it's just that he whacked him. The point is that he's a general, but now he's pretending not to be so he doesn't get whacked. Oh, I see. Oh my God. What if you get whacked? 
That'll be the end of the show. Don't get whacked. It won't be the end. You'll find somebody else. Think so? Somebody else will step in. And you guys will soar. Think so? <laughs> what if I get whacked? Same thing. You'll need someone who's good with the gear. Maybe uh, Brody? I can learn. Yeah. You better get Michael or somebody in here to give you a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the handler come back. He said he was going to come by. Oh, no. Never mind. He might come by tomorrow when no one's here. Yeah. We should text him. Yeah. Uh, so we wrap up with some CAC. And the, and the, and the intro is some CAC news. Uh, of course, the Masters and Events, Dunsky. Okay, just explain. Like, when you say CAC, you still got to say that there's new listeners and all that. You're just talking about your, you know, your porn on Twitter, and now you're saying wrap up with some CAC. So people got to know CAC is contact at the cabin, which is an event. Contact at Somewhat the cabin. Somewhat amuley. Am- amuley. Contact at the coolie. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. Contact <laughs> at the castle. That's right. Uh, contact at the chalet. We got uh, another event. Of course, our, now let's just see, our David Matheson, Brandon Powell event is... <clears throat> is only it's sold out unfortunately it says there's three I spots. thought you said there was a spot left oh, there might be a spot there left. might be a spot left do we do we want people to, if they want that last spot to email, email me like email, that? don't email me if you think you want to come but I got to change the website to say there's I can't let the website accept payments anymore okay because there's either one or none so that, but the reason I came to this site is because it's only 99 days away. We're inside a hundred days till our April event, 99 days, 14 hours, 42 minutes right on, and 15 seconds until contact at the Canyon with David Matheson and Brandon Powell down in Duck Creek Village, Utah is happening. And just last week I launched our next event with our buddies, the brothers of the serpent and uh, team, team Randall. Randall, I like that. <laughs> yeah, Brad and Randall. Of course, that's the one and only Randall Carlson and Brad Young. And uh, we're going to be meeting up in the Soap Lake Spawn Resort in Washington. It's a nice fancy venue. We'll be about 15 miles up the road from the Dry Falls uh, viewing area there. And we've got that. That's uh, April, tw- or sorry, September 21st to 26th of 2020 in Soap Lake, Washington, 257 days away. But that's that's like five trips, I think, from Soap Lake, right? Like eight day one. Yeah, you're gonna go through. Yeah, right I'll now. go through the schedule quick. So we're gonna be staying in Soap Lake, Washington. Um, catered, right? Catered event. It's mm-hmm. all catered by the resort. Um, we'll get you. We're gonna do shuttles from the airport. So we'll do one shuttle from Seattle to and from Seattle. We'll do a, we'll do a shuttle to and from Spokane, and we'll we'll, we'll shuttle people from Wenatchee all day, just because it's only like twenty minutes away, half an, half an hour away. Anyway, there's only 25 spots available. Actually, there's only 11 spots left, which is kind of shitty that when I announce it, but they went quick just on the social medias and everything else. People have been waiting for this one. I I wasn't sure because it's a little bit pricey, but the the tickets are flying. If you think you want to go to this, you better get a deposit in right away. Randall's awesome to hang out with. Randall's Mm -hmm. fucking fantastic. And Brad's cool too, of course. Brad's great. The Snake Bros will be there again. Those guys are awesome. Yeah, we'll be down there, and we're going to be doing a legit Scab Lance tour. We're going to take the full, uh, I think it's six days, five nights. We we both might not be there the whole time, though. Yeah, that's right. I'll probably be there the whole time. Yeah. Um, well, maybe they'll end up rolling out another one and you'll be there week two. Maybe. Anyway, for now, the day one, the 21st, we'll check in at noon. We're going to do an evening trip to the Potholes Cataract as seen on the Joe Rogan experience. I've seen it as well. It's a fantastic spot. Uh, day two towards Spokane Valley, conduit for floodwaters from Purcell, Trench and Clark Fork Valley, Crab Creek Cooley Upper. Bowl and Pitcher State Park, Hangman Valley, and Steptoe Butte for Sunset. Butte, Steptoe Butte, Butte, Butte yep. for Sunset. Uh, day three will be towards the Columbia River Gorge. Uh, Potholes Reservoir, Drumheller Channels, Wallula Gap, Devil's Canyon, Palhousie Falls State Park. Day four towards the Okanagan Rilly Valley, River Valley. Will be Withrow Moraine, Boulder Park, Moses Cooley, Big Bend Terrace, and Yeager Rock. That's a long day. 
Oh yeah, there's two day day two and four are both like 200 mile round trip days. Nice. Uh, those will be some long days. Day five we got up and down Grand Coulee, the Sun Lakes, Dry Falls Cataract, the Grand Coulee Dam Overlook, Steamboat Rock State Park, and then Parte Friday night. That we won't have to do anything the next morning. That'll be our Cut loose Friday night. Everyone will be able to ham because we don't have checkout till noon the next day. We got a nice late checkout. You guys can sleep in. We'll do some morning. You know, we're not we don't we don't bother scheduling anything on the last morning because it's pretty heartfelt and everyone's saying goodbye. And it'll be a grand old time. So there it is. You got your five nights, six days. Fantastic, fantastic trip. The the there's pictures of the links to the resort and everything on the website. Contact at thecabin.com slash Carlson. So Monday's the first day then? So 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 starts Monday, Monday night at noon. Starts Monday at noon. So can people go for Sunday night if they if they can, or would they just have to book their own bad, They'd have to book night, their own probably? room. Because so that weekend, probably most people will travel. Yeah, that's what we kind of did is gave everyone a travel weekend. We were looking at it as doing five days. You're taking three days out of a week any way you do it. So instead of doing it on a long weekend when everything's going to be fucking packed, yeah, because you're losing three days. So most people are losing the week anyway because the fourth day they're traveling. Right. So you might as well just take the week. People yeah. need to take the weekend. And then anyway. they've got that bef- the weekend before and after where things yep. can they can relax or they can hang. Like maybe a bunch of people will stay an extra day or yeah, come early knows. or whatever, and yeah. they'll hang out anyways. It'll be a blast. Well, I think a bunch of us, a few of us, are going to go down early and meet up, like Brad. Randall and I and the Snake Bros were talking about us going down, you know, on the Friday or the Saturday and just getting a little house someplace where we can just prepare. Yeah. That's the one thing about Colorado is it all happened fast. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the first group. I mean, I wasn't even there yet. Luckily, yeah. it's a lot closer to uh, Dry Falls and I know the way. So I won't drive any amount in the wrong direction <clears throat> of course this is uh with the five days and the catered and the spa and everything else this is a little more pricey than our regular events uh it is uh with tax it comes in at or sorry not with tax i shouldn't say with tax with fees it comes in at two two it's 2160 plus fees comes to two thousand two hundred and twenty four dollars and eighty cents but you can you can get in you can get a spot secured with a five hundred dollar deposit and, uh, yeah, like I say, there's 11 spots left as of today. And I don't know, like, I joked about adding a second week. That's not, uh, I don't even know if that's an option from, like, four different directions. I haven't talked to Resort. I haven't yeah, talked yeah, to Randall. Don't, nobody, yeah. nobody think that's going to happen Nobody assume yet, there's going to be a second yeah, week. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's probably not going to be a second week. It's going to be a pretty action-packed week. But next, next, I mean, next year we'll be hopefully going to Europe or something like that. Maybe, well, twenty twenty-one is Castle, already maybe, looking. Yeah. We're looking at uh, Randall wants to do the Montana side of the Scablands in the September of twenty twenty-one. Um, so that'll be so it'd be a real good idea if you want to see the whole Scablands, both sides of the mountains. Then you'd want to see the this year, and then next fall we'll be going to the Montana side. We were talking about doing both in one trip, but it was just too it was far. Too much. Too it was far. like two weeks. Too, too much, much traveling, traveling back and forth. Yeah. So we split it up, and I mean, I'm I'm sure there'll be more of both of those down the road. We're just getting our our wheels greased here, but I don't know when that's going to be because 2021 is pretty well booked up because we're doing the Scablands Montana side. And we're sorry, I don't know if that's technically called the scablons. I think that's more just flood uh, evidence, more evidence of the flood, not scablons. You're technically out of the scablons by then, I think. Randall would know for sure. Uh, and but then we got uh, contact at the castle, July 2021, where we're going to go over to the UK. It looks like with uh, Randall and a couple other people, maybe some people that are in the UK already. Yep. And uh, do some events over there, at least one. So we'll get the UK posse. We'll start testing the waters on that right away. We're already looking at venues. We already got some commitments, so it's going to be good. We're going to go there and do an event or two, and just that'll be where we start the Grail tour. Search for the Holy Grail. Um, so yeah, 2021 is looking pretty booked up. We're going to do another Matheson event, I think, in Utah again. Probably we, we might do this one in early May instead of April. I think the, Dave was saying the the Milky Way might be a little more visible. But we'll see how this April goes. If this April goes really great, then we'll just keep it in April. We might do a couple simple weekend ones too. Yeah, cheap, we're looking at a couple quick different and things. Just for having a couple guests come and do like, I would like to do a lecture. Brandon like a lecture wants to do one, something like too. A, you know, just to like sit in, 
not a lot of travel, but just sit in and socialize and, and watch and have yeah, an like interactive lecture someplace. for like one or two of our guests to come and just like blow our minds for a day or two. Yeah. And we're actively looking for ideas for these things. Well, I got a lot in my head and want Dude, too many ideas. Yeah. Send me your ideas. If you have some We've ideas for different while, events. Oh, okay. I'll give you some more. I'll give you more details. Okay. Okay. For travel ones or for? No. For I'm not these. asking for details for your lecture one. Okay. I mean, for CAC events. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. For the travel ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was okay. going to say, if you have all these CAC ideas, how come you haven't shared any of them with me yet? <laughs> anyway, I, uh, you, well, you we're can two plan years the lecture. Up. I mean, yeah, geez, you can plan the lecture one. You know, Castle, the Castle, the Holy Grail one's the the, good, the big one. Well, weekend ones, could be we can fit those in all over yeah. the place. Yeah. Like, if it's a Friday to a Sunday, that's not, yeah. I, I can pull those off all the time. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, so send me ideas. If you've got ideas for CAC events, I mean, the, the calendar's starting to fill up. So if you've got an idea like, hey, it'd be cool to go here and do this with this person, uh, email me and I'll see what we will reach out. We'll see what we can do about it because we got a good little thing going here and I don't see any reason in stopping it or slowing it down. Right on. And uh, this will be the Randall event not to be missed. Contact at thecabin.com. Both events are there, and I'll start adding pages to that as we, you know, probably within the next few months, I'll have the next, like, year and a half of events up on that page. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, Not to uh, take deposits okay. yet, but to start pre-signing up and stuff like that. Yeah. So, contact at thecabin.com. Of course, support the show, grandmerica.ca slash support. Uh, we're through the Christmas season now. Support's been down for a couple months here. Let's see that jump back up. With some new monthly subscriptions, double check your subscription because PayPal's kicking them off all the time. All the time, yeah. All the time. That's where it happens all it the happens time. happens all the time. So if you're not sure about your subscription, double check. If you get an email from PayPal saying- We canceled we, it, that's bullshit. Yeah. We love right. you. We would never cancel that. We need the money. Uh, we got rent to pay. We got bills to pay. We got- We need the support to keep shit going. Uh, otherwise, it's a, it lubes the gears of creativity and production. So, grandamerica.ca slash support. If you don't like PayPal, we got Stripe options there as well. Uh, I'm working on getting the cryptos going again, but my history with cryptos is not good, even with people nicknamed crypto. Um, so, yeah, no cryptos currently. You know who I, I, get, I get to talk to? I. See if he can guide me in the right direction on how to deal with cryptos. Anyway, for now, there's PayPal there, there's Stripe there, there's Patreon. Those the are PO awesome. box, too. P.O. box, send cash to the P.O. box. I'll be able to use that 40 bucks when I go see the snake bros. I'll buy you something nice. Thanks. You think I, I'll, what are you getting? I'll get you like uh, some salsa or something. I don't want anything like that. No? What do you want? It's a crystal or something, maybe. A crystal. Okay, I'll get you a crystal. You know what I'll get you? I'll get you an arrowhead. Uh, uh, okay, sure. All right. GrandAmerica.ca slash support. Please and thank you. We love you. Uh, anything else you got? That's about it, buddy. That's it. Yeah. We got a fantastic chat coming up with... Uh, the odd, the man, odd man out. So this will be an interesting episode. We have the odd man out here, J.R. Hodge with us. Don't really know much, but I've been following him on Instagram. And I'm actually, I hope it's okay with you, J.R., but I've been reading your quotes from your page on the show every now and then because I love the stuff that you're posted on there and all your quotes, kind of like deep state, anti-state and all that stuff. And then Darren is kind of in that in that space right now after reading some of David McGowan's old work that we thought... Uh, I thought, you know what, why not just chat with this guy? And then I realized you got your own podcast started up, so we can talk about that as well. So thanks for coming on and joining us. Oh, man, I really appreciate you guys having me on. I've been looking forward to it. 
Right on. Where I don't know where you want to start. I mean, we're going to be able to talk about a lot of different things here, but uh, maybe start about, why don't we start about talking about your podcast, I guess. And then there was a thought we had before we started recording. I don't want to lose that. Do you remember what it was, Darren? Oh, oh. man. He called me a statist. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. Your conversation with a guy the other day about probably the difference between anarchism or... or uh, or um, libertarianism or something. I felt like that's where you were right. going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Now I was talking to him about a few years ago, how I was more, um, you know, more of a straight up libertarian. Yeah, and, I knew it. Uh, I knew it. Yeah. You know, and uh, I think it's just a natural progression, you know, as you kind of like, I, I used to be a hardcore conservative after nine 11, man. I like to tell people that I became so conservative I uh, made Ted Cruz look like Bill Maher because it was just goofy. And I was in a heavy metal band at the time, so it seemed really weird. People thought I'd went insane, you know. But, um, yeah, and you kind of start to progress as you read more and find out a lot more about how the banking institutions and the multinational corporations work. And you see that this whole free market thing, is it's kind of a farce. We really don't have a free market, and I don't know if we ever have, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I saw a quote, and I'm not even sure if it's, you know, legit, because you know how that goes. But uh, it was a Ron Paul quote, and it said, you know, uh, capitalism has never, you know, has never even been tried. And if you think about the actual, you know, if you go with the actual definition of it, you know, just a voluntary exchange of goods and services, you know, for money or whatever. I mean, when has that happened except on the small business end of things? You know, it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, probably like it. late 1800s. Yeah, mid 1800s is or, when you. Or, I mean, or even until at that time, online buy and sell. I mean, we go we go and trade with people. What? See, what? Let's not talk about that part of it. What? <laughs> let's not talk about that part is because what the, the, the this ends at avoiding taxes. So let's not bring that part of it. <laughs> no, I'm talking this. about just Kijiji oh, or like okay. he's online, okay. like like you know we can make sales makes amongst sound like ourselves you're talking about now. A podcast like, no, but we have the technology now to trade amongst ourselves. We pay taxes. <laughs> right. I, you know, I mean, I can trade a, a good for a book. Oh, yeah. They're like, coming after that somehow. I'm but, sure they're, uh, I don't know how they're going to do it, but they know that they're missing out on hundreds of millions of dollars a year on that secondhand market. Like the other day, I was like looking for these two, my, my buddy sent me these two D&D books that I wanted to buy, right? Some guy dropped them off at my door for 50 bucks Canadian. Like less than half price. I mean, so isn't that part of what we would like to see on a more yeah. grand scale? I mean, hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. I mean, and as far as I'm stuff. concerned, the taxes are even paid on those fucking books. Yeah. yeah. True, so that's yeah. my argument for the whole second half market. We've already paid tax on that shit. Go away. That's true. Go away. Yeah. You take my income, you take my buy, you take, now you want it on the second time I buy it. I got to give you a cut. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Part right. of my French. You know, um, there's a, that really short book. I can't remember who wrote it, but it's called I Pencil. I don't, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it, but it's just like this oh. short book and it, it tells, you know, all the little nuances and little costs involved with making any product. And in, in this book, it, you know, pencil, you don't think much about pencils and, you know, what it takes to make a pencil, but it, it's pretty interesting because there are a lot of, you know, costs that people don't think about. Yeah. 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 I heard about that book. Yeah. It's a neat little book. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, um, almost with everything nowadays, it's like one extreme to the other, you know, with, you know, whether it's, um, capitalism or socialism, communism, whatever, you know, none of the isms work. Right. Right. So, Go go ahead. I don't think lack of anism is a solution either because there's too many people. I think lack right. lack of a lack of an ism, regardless of what it was, was okay when we were nomadic or maybe more tribal. But it's nowadays smaller, you try and population. drop out some sort of an ism and you know, okay, we could go volunteerism or we can go anarchism. But I'll tell you what, I, I don't see that, you know, a couple decades into that 
you're back to kings and kingdoms, you know, like the, right. like you're going to start looking a lot like Saudi Judaism, Arabia. Like, right. I, I agree. It's, you know, I don't know what the answer is really. I mean, maybe, you know, if, if communities could start to, you know, band together and I don't know if that could ever happen, but I can't even get along with my neighbors. So I don't <laughs> have a lot of faith in that either, but yeah, I don't know. Well, that's part of the problem, I think, is that, in, you know, having the internet and the hyper connectedness and connectiveness and everything else has made us a bit, a bit picky, maybe, or a bit, yeah. a bit picky of who we want to chum around with because we can instantly be connected to a community of like-minded people. Uh, like right. we have in the Grimerica chats, which, you know, makes me less likely to go talk to my neighbor when I can just look on my phone and talk to Ryan in Kansas that agrees with me on most things. And, uh, we get each other. And, but I think that in a certain step is like, or in a certain sense is taken away that getting to know your neighbor, maybe. Yeah, I think so. The more, you know, connected we become with the internet, the less we're connected with our communities and with our families and everything else, you know, it's kind of a, everything has a give and take, you know? Because I mean, and then the other thing is, I mean, we were just arguing about that the other day at work is I got time for some socialism. I've got time to entertain some stuff like that. Like, I don't like that Bill Gates owns our national fucking railroad. That seems right. crazy to me. And that, you know, Bill Gates shit is dumping money in to go against pipelines. And I'm not pro pipeline. Don't think that I'm saying pro pipeline for a second. But the thing is that we've got foreign citizens dumping money into against our economy in different ways for, and people think it's for the environment when really it's just because Bill Gates wants to make money moving oil on his train, which I'm indifferent on, but I don't, I think that maybe the Canadian railroad, it's okay if the Canadians own that. I don't know if that would yeah. be considered socialism though. I mean, well, the, the, it's a, it definitely is. I would say it leans closer to socialism than anything else. And I don't, the argument against that is always that, well, you don't want the government owning that. And you're right. I well, don't they do want, fuck a lot of things. Up, I don't I want mean, the government worse. owning that, but the government is supposed to be by definition us. So hey. I, maybe it's because like I say, I don't know if anarchy is the answer. Cause I think it's just going to go back to Kings and kingdoms and people with the most weapons and the most brute force taking over the place. But I don't know. So is that kind of where you were going as you started out conservative? You ended up going, you know, becoming a little bit more libertarian. And then over time you started more towards anarchism. And now, now you're where we are, where you don't know what the answer is. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, the more I learn, the more, the less I know. You yeah. Know? That's what uh, we were just saying. <laughs> I was a day. registered libertarian a year and a half ago. The same as you. You know, I, I still respect a lot of those ideas, um, but I think that they, like everything else, even though they, they're kind of considered more rebellious, they kind of get locked into that group think. And, you know, some of them can't think past taxation is theft, which it is, but, you know, you've got to have more to, you know, your system and more to your ideas than that. And I, if you're not willing to, you know, um, if you're not willing to ex accept that, the free market, you know, like I was saying before, kind of doesn't exist. There's too much, there's protectionism and favoritism, you know, crony capitalism, whatever you want to call it. We just don't have a free market in most cases. That's true. And I also think there's some naivety, naivety in there in, in like, you know, there's people in China selling fake fucking eggs right now. You know, they're making them out of runoff and they're selling fake eggs. Like, you know, how far are we removed from getting or plastic oatmeal, in your rice, plastic oatmeal rice that's and... half sawdust if there's, you know, right. because I, you know, that's the same thing as I don't want the government involved in my food, but I don't want, you know, Joe Blow billionaire feeding my kids sawdust in their oatmeal either. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, it's, you know, happy medium sounds like a cliche, but if you could find some kind of like. It, it always gets out of hand with regulations. You know, you want certain regulations, you want common sense regulations, but on most things, but uh, it gets out of hand where, you know, the big corporations pay off the government to overregulate. So the small businesses can't compete with the regulations and they, you know, snuff them out. 
So what do you do? You know, it's right now. And like, I always use this as an example. Oh, the listeners are going to freak the fuck out, but like they're, they're building a huge new plaza, like outdoor mall thing over here. Just like literally like just a couple block miles from my house, a couple miles from the studio. It's this East Hills Plaza. And they, they just build, it's a giant outdoor mall. It's going to be massive by the time it's finished. And it's like straight up on the website. If you're not a chain, don't bother. If you don't, if you're not an established chain store, you're not welcome in our shopping center, period. It says that on the website. It's, it's crazy. Which to That's me crazy. smells like fascism. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But yeah, maybe it's I mean, not because is the government involved? Who is involved to tell me that I can't open up a Grimerica booth there someplace? Who gets to tell us that? Is that the developer that says that? How come the developer can say that? And who's yeah, he getting money from? To, who's he getting money that, from? Right? How come if I want right. to open up a coffee shop in Chestermere, it's got to be a Tim Hortons? Right. Yeah. You know, I always, for, for a long time now, I've had this question, you know, kind of running around in my head. Because you get one side saying, you know, it's the government's fault. Then you get the other side saying it's, you know, it's the greedy, you know, businesses, their, their fault. But what came first, you know, was it the politician with his handout for money from the businessman or vice versa? We, we don't know. And it goes both ways. And now it's almost like there's, it's, there's almost no separation between government and private businesses or the, the bigger ones anyway. So you know, I, you can't. so do you think it's a people problem then? Well, yeah, I agree. I think greed, you know, to make it, I mean, it sounds simple, but you know, no matter what, I think eventually people start looking out for themselves. Yeah. I don't know because if it's I more, think I like, think it's more brainwashing. I mean, the biggest corporations that, w- that we're talking about in the world right now are like the Googles, the Facebooks, the, the, the Twitter type things that are actually starting to control the message. They're starting to yes. control. It's going to get a lot worse. They're controlling our culture right now. Yeah. Or they're I trying to, they're trying but to, but it was and a, doing a pretty good job. Of it. I, <laughs> yeah, man, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, the censorship is unbelievable. Unbelievable. I had uh, my YouTube, I guess it's been a little over a year now. It was deleted. You know, I had a few videos on there, maybe 30, some odd videos. Not, not a big deal, but, you know, with no really good reason for it. Um, and the same with, I had a, uh, a blog and it was taken down. You know. I mean, and I'm just, I'm nobody, but I know like people like, you know, Jay Dyer and, uh, this one uh, really good uh, blog, the Propaganda Report. They they also do a podcast too. Oh yeah, they're they're, they're, they're great. Down. Yeah, I love those guys. They were taken down too, and you know, so many like literally, man. I looked on my YouTube in um, you know my playlists the other day. Three quarters of the videos are gone. The pages are just gone. That's, <sighs> You got you got to step up to the mic a little bit, uh, or just get your face in there a little bit more. Um, the, the the other thing that what I meant to say besides just the censorship and the and the cultural um, influence through me- media and the digital digital part is is the the propaganda from those corporations as well, or the or the NGOs and the, I mean that, I think that's the big the biggest one now. But my take on like, that is that hasn't changed. It's just no, different. It's now, just, but now you, now the oh, no, no, no 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 it it's now. changed because there's way more money now. Now they have like eighteen billion to throw around instead of a couple million to throw around. I mean everything's yeah, exponentially but back in the escalating. 60s, they just didn't need that because they didn't. There was no question. There was no dissent. They just fed you your fucking message well, on that's the news why it's changed, and in right? your newspaper and they didn't have to do anything now, else. Yeah. So the exact same thing is just morphing to fit the new thing. It's not a new thing. In my opinion, it's the same control mechanism, but it's, it's just expanding and control. trying that's, to control that's, it. That's, yeah. Because we don't have that single source of entertainment anymore. That's why it needed to go to 18 billion. Yeah. So it has, it's not in my sense, that's not new. That's just that growing containment morphing to do whatever it has to do to try and keep yeah, that. Yeah. I was going more against the capitalism, socialism, communism are all fucked if people are greedy because in socialism and communism, they got greedy for power. 
because a little bit of power is what you'd have over people because you couldn't get ahead of them in a financial standpoint, but you could get them sent to the gulag or you could, you know, do things like that. So all the people that had any power turned into real fucking not great people. The same mm. thing when it was supposed to be a system that was supposed to be, you know, to, to di- redistribute the wealth evenly, then the power and everything else became, I mean, that's what you have all these fucking horror stories. But it, yeah. isn't it getting closer to, you know, global slavery, slavery though? I mean, it's, it's really, well, that's what the it's worry getting is free that, trade is. It's getting to that point where that's what my concern with free trade is, is when, what free trade, I think, in my opinion, did is, you know, turned the third world into our slaves so that I could get a $50 sweater or a hundred dollar shoes or whatever, you know, fill in the blank. So that's where it's like, that's our role in it is, was that we're in, in our defense. We're just sort of waking up to that too. Right. Back in the, when that first happened, it's, and that's my, my other problem with the libertarians is free trade doesn't work when the world isn't on the same economic scale. So if I can just take my shit to China and make it for five cents on the dollar, then how is that fair to anybody? It's not fair to the f- people in China that are ma- right. making it. It's not fair to the people that lost their jobs here. But I get right. my, my cheap shit from Walmart. Right, man. I, I In the 90s, the late 90s, I worked for Levi Strauss. And that was one of the first companies I remember moving to you know, to Mexico and people were just devastated. You know, some people had been there like 30 years and, you know, I didn't even think at the time cause I was young that that was going to be the norm. I mean, that's what happened. You know, all those companies moved away and, um, you know, there are a lot of those jobs just don't exist anymore. I was, um, I was reading, I've been doing some research on, uh, you guys are probably familiar with, um, Cecil Rhodes and all, you know, the blood diamonds and all that deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really crazy. You know, when you think about the history of diamonds and how, you know, they marketed those diamonds to women and now they think they have to have them. And the things that are involved in getting those diamonds out of those mines, I'm sure there's still slaves getting, you know, digging. As we speak. Well, now it's it's lithium and it's all kinds of other things that the... That's a little they synchro, actually, because you know what? I drove by Spence Diamonds today. I was turning left onto McLeod there, and I looked over, and there's Spence Diamonds. And I just remembered being in that store like 10 years ago, and I was just like, I would never, fu- I will never buy a fucking another diamond as long as I live. And I don't mean in a red wedding ring sense or anything like that. I just mean like, there's no fucking chance that I'm spending money, hard-earned money, on a fucking diamond. On oh, a gem, yeah. There's right. no chance, unless I'm using that diamond to cut some glass or I don't know. <laughs> it's just, just, it's funny you mentioned that. Cause I just looked at Spence diamond. I even thought of the old ads that they used to have on the radio. And I was just how fucking caught up in this whole fucking scheme. Do you have to be, to be in there spending $5,000 on a little fucking rock? Absolutely, man. I wonder how many other schemes there is that we just haven't figured out oh, yet. Oil is you know? a huge one. I think oil is just, uh, I mean, and I'm not going to get into a whole pollution debate or anything like that, but I'm a firm believer that oil is just a mineral. You know, there is, uh, I think he was a senator. I could be wrong. His name's Lindsey Williams. And I know he's written several kind of conspiracy theory type books. And I believe one of his books was, he was saying that, um, you know, just what you said, that uh, oil comes from minerals and it's, you know, plentiful. It's abiotic and not uh, not a fossil fuel. Right, yeah. right. I haven't read the book, but it sounds familiar, you know. I've heard that was based on some Russian research as you well. You know what else I was Russian thinking scientists. about just the other day is like, I remember when I was like eight, watching, we were there, we were watching the hockey game and my grandma's like, you guys in your hockey game. She's like, it's all theater. And I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean, Graham? And she's like, it's all set up. And I'm like, no way. And she's like, I'm telling you. It's, I'm like, how could they set it up? How could they set it up? And now when I look at the NFL, I'm just like, man, that lady was ahead of her time. Yeah. She just, and I'm still not sold on the NHL. I just think, I think that really like the NHL is, is like a throw on league. 
I don't know enough about the NBA to know for sure, but football is the big one. That seems like it's a giant. giant I think illusion. she meant. I think she meant it was a distraction. Like like yeah. the gladiators yeah. would have been in Rome. I mean, yeah. That they, they keep you busy. Oh, I they keep, about that, like she's yeah. she's not saying it's the every game is fixed and it's each game is theater like wrestling would be. I think she was saying that this is a distraction, Darren. Uh, I wish I could have Grandma on the show. Wait, yeah, no. yeah. Whoa, did you guys just say wrestling's fake? <laughs> well, I think uh, well, no, we oh, man, all the sports on. are all the sports are fake. <laughs> uh, I think. Yeah, I, I you know you know they talk about boxing and how so many fights have been faked over the years and i'm sure it's probably like that in other sports as well well who I, knows how yeah i, I think it happens but i just don't it, think even it's the like tv all, i would, you know i was like i was thinking about today i was like who is i talking to today and it's like the cable bill is like 240 bucks a month or something like that and i'm like i couldn't imagine paying 240 dollars a month so that i could have no time because I'm too busy mm -hmm. caught up watching a bunch of bullshit that's trying to program me. Yes. I totally agree, man. I I I hate to say it, but I don't even watch movies anymore. No, I can't. I'll, I'll watch can't. a documentary, yeah. but hmm. I'm having a hard time with the movies too from Hollywood. I watch the odd one. I'll go to the theater the odd time, but if it's not in the theater, I'm not I'm not watching movies really. I, I watched I uh, the original Lion King again the other day. It's always tough when Mufasa dies. Mm -hmm. Kids still have trouble with that one. But uh, other than that, I can't even remember. Well, the last movie I, I rented was uh, the one that made me question the moon landing again. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to mention this one, and, and now it's a good time to bring it up anyways, is is that not only the, the 18 billion that we talked about that can go into cultural engineering, but also, or social engineering as well, but uh, propaganda, like I watched the uh, the truth, truth stream media came out with a documentary of the myth of extinction. It was about uh, deconstructing that extinction rebellion mm. and the occult symbolism in there and the money and where it comes from and how this whole thing is orchestrated. And they bring up the point about the corporations too. Like, you know, this is all blaming us for everything, right? Well, that's why the, the okay. So that's where the whole fascism things, because I think that's like the whole rollover into the corporations was like by design. It was like a natural progression that the government had to do to maintain the control. Because I think that they're still scared that we still always have the ability to take back that government, mm -hmm. our, our our respective governments. But that's why all right. the secrets are locked up in whatever fill in the blank. Um. What's the big defense one? Lockheed Martin. The food ones. Who knows what they're sitting on? You know, like who knows? At this point, it's like who knows what corporations are legit and which ones are like government offshoots. Right. And that's yeah. even here because I think that like Volkswagen and all those are German government back in the day. You know what I mean? Like I think that's how they sprawled it out is once they figured out that you could never control the world by the point of the gun. And even if you could, it wasn't going to be sustainable. And then they just started up all these crazy corporations and Germany ends up being the powerhouse of the EU 50 years later anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, if you I'm look at the, whatever we say, if, I don't know if you guys, you, you may have looked, but on the CFR.org, the, you know, the Council on Foreign Relations website, you go on there and you look at all their uh, corporate members, and it's all these multinational corporations. <laughs> and those guys have so much you know, sway and influence on foreign policy. It's just unbelievable. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So is that what you would say the deep state is, or does it go deeper than that? Is it hidden, is it hidden and, and deeper than that? I'd say, you know, that's part of it. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure it does go deeper than that. You know, I think probably most of the things the deep state does, we probably don't find out about for decades, you know. Yeah. And they, then they end up like declassifying the some of the, you know, documents after 30 years or something like that after nobody cares, you know, anymore. Yeah. Well, but yeah, I think that's, you know, if you look into all that whole Rhodes... The uh, Rhodes Roundtable and all that, all those groups that came out of that, yeah. that definitely the council is, is one of those groups. Yeah. yeah. At the turn of the century, wasn't like 
the family run in England, the family run in Germany, and the family run in Russia, all fucking cousins? Yeah, I think so. The 13 bloodlines, you know, they talk about. And there must be some truth to that because... There has to be. Yeah. And I would have said that was crazy five years ago, but I'm back all in. Someone's pulling the string somewhere and they're in Europe someplace. Yes. Have you guys, he, he's from your neck of the woods. Have you heard of a guy named Gary Wayne? No. An author? Two first names. Yeah, exactly. Um, sounds like a NASCAR guy, doesn't it? Gary yeah. Wayne. <laughs> Ricky Bobby Gary. But, um, <laughs> I, he wrote this book a couple of years ago, uh, years ago called The Genesis 6 Conspiracy. Oh, I and, have heard of that before. I've seen, I've seen that somewhere. I think it was on Instagram. And I thought, this book looks amazing. And oh, man. then I thought I should try and get this guy on. And then I, it slipped through the cracks somehow. Yeah. Um, it, I, I heard him on a podcast. I can't remember, you know, who he was with, but I was just, I just stumbled upon him and I was like, what is this guy talking about? And I started looking him up and watching all of his YouTube videos and stuff. And I bought the book and wow, he, he, he ties in the, the, bloodlines the secret societies the nephilim i mean it's unbelievable it's like an 800 and some odd page book in fact i got it here just to kind of show you guys yeah can't really can't really see it but uh dude that's the book i, I was all already into deep policy and, and as far as politics go but i wasn't really into the bloodlines and yeah, secret yeah. societies and yeah. all that yeah it just blew my mind. So that brought that brought you in. That tied some things together for you. It pretty much ties everything together. I mean, it's you know he, he brings in all the different groups and he goes all the way back to pre-flood era times and uh, just super interesting. I, I can't. I keep going back to it. It's such a thick book. There's almost 200 reference pages. So. It's like one of those you keep beside you when you're doing research and keep going back to it. Okay, I remember reading something about that in that book. Let me go back, you know. How neck? How yeah. our neck of the woods? Well, uh, like I Canada think he's in or Alberta. Alberta? In Alberta? Shit, yeah, we can get so. him in the studio. Yeah. He's yeah, in Alberta. He's yeah, we got to like, get him in can't here. Can't be far. Yeah. All right. What's the book Super called again? Nice guy, have to the, buy Ge that. the Genesis 6 Conspiracy? Yeah. 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 Oh, I remember. I that's it's burned into my head because I saw that and I was like, "What is this? How have I not heard about this before?" All right, I'll order us a copy for the studio. <clears throat> he, his mind is like a rolodex of this stuff because I've watched so many of his videos and it's like he's such a humble little guy. And you know, I'm like, hmm. "How did you memorize all these things?" But uh, kind of reminds me of that. I know he's been on your show, uh, Robert W. Sullivan. Yep, the uh, yeah. Freemason. Yeah, he's amazing too. Um, I find that guy fascinating. I've learned more about Freemasonry from him than I have, you know, reading numerous other books. Yeah, yeah. So, what I've would you a, consider? What would you consider approach. deep policy then? Like I, I heard you mention that you're into deep policy, like as in how policy is created and who creates it. And yeah, yeah, that and you know how so many of these, like uh, so so much of the. The programs and the bills and all those different things that the public never hears about. And, uh, you know, just a lot of this stuff that the intelligence community does overseas and that kind of stuff, you know, that most people never give a second thought to that, you know? Yeah. I just think it's really interesting because it, it really has so much to do with our world and what's, you know, what goes on. The fact that I didn't know anything about 5,000 fucking tractors blocking a bridge in Germany until Graham showed it me on his phone today has a pretty good idea of the state of the American media. It's like right. North yes. American media. North American yeah. media. Well, probably all of it. I mean, that, that that's, should be an indicator of all of it. And that's what it is, is just for the last hundred years, the intelligence communities have been doing whatever the fuck they want all over the world and telling us whatever the fuck they want. Yeah, we just but now, it up. Yeah, yeah. it's football. Yeah, we you know we're so distracted with other things, and you know we don't. Most people don't give a second thought. You know, it's like they. This is this is what kills me about 
conservatives. And like I said, I used to be, you know, an uber conservative. But they go on about fake news, which there's plenty of fake news, yet they can't think outside of what, like, Fox and, and Rush Limbaugh tells them. You know, they believe that that's the whole world of politics. And it seems to me like um, the two parties, parties, like the mainstream thought has gotten even more ignorant than it was a few years ago. Oh, it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. terrible. Well, People aren't thinking anymore. Well, do you think that it's it's got anything to do with the uh, the Smith Munt Act being repealed in 2012, where where the propaganda is 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 it allowed now in there? Like, it's or it no was it was per, dis, it's, it's no, no longer, longer disallowed, prohibited. I mean, but yeah. I don't think. I mean, because I feel like there was a real big shift when that happened. I think it got worse, yes. but it was still. I mean, I think it's all just been all propaganda. I mean, the Smith Munts Act was not in place when they were pulling all that 9 11 shit, or was in place when they were pulling all that 9 11 bullshit. Yeah. Which and, it actually uh, seemed like they got the memo on halfway through the day. Yeah. Because you look in the morning and it's almost like they're doing real news. And then by the afternoon, it's Osama bin Laden, Osama bin Laden, Osama bin Laden, Osama bin Laden, Osama bin Laden. Or the towers Osama falling like 15 minutes before. Just the, Tower 7. Just Tower 7. They're talking about it falling before it fell. WT7 didn't kill himself. Yeah. WTC. Yeah. That's, oh my yeah. God. The fact that people still believe that official narrative and don't think, that, you know, there's anything to question. <laughs> it's just insane. It's like, uh, I don't know if we can talk about it on here, but... Uh, oh, yeah, anything. Sandy Hook. You know, uh, people get real upset when you talk about that, so I won't say too much, but... Uh, except that I've never... Besides 9-11, I've never seen so many shady, you know, facts related to an incident in my life. I just don't understand how people can't uh, question some of those things. Well, that one's pretty hard to question because you're going to get kicked off of, of shit, and I mean, it, it's pretty heavily censored, which to me is a red flag in itself. I mean, whenever you can't discuss something, um, even talk about it, it's something wrong with that picture. Right. Is there any, like uh, any ones that you come out to you that you would, uh, say should be looked at? Like what are the top three for you that from that? Oh, from, uh, Sandy Hook. from St. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, did you guys ever watch the, uh, documentary we need to talk about sandy hook no i don't think so that was a great one of course it's of course it's scrubbed from youtube yeah. now but you could probably Scrub find it, it on archive.org or somewhere like that but uh there were just so many like so many of the uh, parents were actors or performers um that main dad david wheeler uh him and his wife they go around and talk you know and they're trying to like get guns banned basically. Um, but he was actually in an anti-gun movie for an independent film company a couple of years before that. And, uh, I watched the film and it's just, it's hor It's a horrible movie, but obviously, you know, that was already set up. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, if you watch that documentary, it's just, there's so many different things. There's so many things like the one uh, guy who let, uh, a bunch of the kids come into his house to hide or whatever. He, they were on the bus, and I guess the bus stopped, and he let the kids come into his house. I think his name's Gene, but I don't remember what his last name is. Come on in, kids. Yeah, come on in here. We got some candy. Come on but in he, the uh, cellar. They have uh, film footage of him rehearsing what he's going to say, and uh, you know he just keeps on rehearsing the lines, and I'm like, this is supposed to be, um, they, they portrayed it like, you know, one of the um, people from the news, the local news station just walked up to him and started talking to him. But he was rehearsing his lines. There are just so many things yeah, that's that weird. make sense. Yeah. Did you see the one? Uh, my favorite one is where Buddy's like, it's the weatherman. And he's like out and he's like, he's like, leaning in and he's like screaming and then like in the background this like old couple just walks by in their shorts it's the funniest <laughs> shit i've ever seen he's like standing oh, in a look, ditch look. <laughs> <laughs> that that's you know that right there is it shows you how the whole of our you know mainstream news works yeah it just makes you wonder is it like so 
So is fake news, is that like, is that to get us looking at it so we could figure out it's all fake? Or is that to get us trust in whatever is going to replace it? Well, that's the, that's a good question. You know, I've, I vacillate back and forth on that. You know, I don't know. Who vacillate? I like that. You know, um, another one that kills me more recently is, uh, you know, the Las Vegas shooting. I mean, there, there's so many, we really didn't get hardly any answers from that. And they just kind of like brushed that aside and people don't even ask about it anymore. You know, we forget things like in a week, we, we we're on to the next selective outrage, you know? It's like we're being directed constantly. 100%. Yeah. This is the Grand America gets kicked off YouTube app. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to that dude who shot up Vegas anyway? Because there was that video of that, uh, like, some dude getting escorted out of there by dudes with machine guns. Can you just right. have machine guns in Vegas? I guess you can. It's America, so you probably can just have machine. Clearly, you can. But he had a bunch of machine guns in his room. Yeah, like there was an unbelievable amount. Like somebody said that it would they would would have weighed like two hundred and fifty pounds or something like that. I mean, he could have carried carried them up separately in separate bags, I guess. But a lot of different, a uh, lot of different weird scenarios. You know, a lot of the people said there was. Two shooters on the ground originally. And helicopter shooters, I think, too, was the big one. Yeah, and then um, several people, I think a handful of people that were there uh, died mysteriously. The witnesses, uh, like from car wrecks and different things right after that. It's crazy, man. Yeah, I know somebody that got uh, got shot there or injured. Or someone I know somebody from that knows somebody. Yeah, Someone from Okotoks yeah. died there, supposedly. Yeah. Which is interesting because sometimes you wonder if they're real or not, and sometimes you really hear that there are people that that died. Or well, you got two or different not. things, right? You got fake events and false flags. Yeah. Which both happen. Yeah. Both yeah. are proven to have happened in yeah. history. Yeah. The whole Vietnam debacle starts with a false flag. How are right, people not yeah. more upset about that? I mean, it was only fucking 50 years ago. I know, so man. So you're not that far removed from people you know dying in a war that was started over fucking bullshit. Yeah. Well, and, I, almost every war was. I well, mean, yeah, that's, that's the other thing. That's I mean, our take. It wasn't it, just Vietnam. It takes you a while to get there, though. But v- Vietnam, it's all, like, right there. You can, yeah, like, and, you know. It's on Wikipedia, for fuck's sakes. Yeah, and my uh, my dad, who I really didn't grow up around, but you know, he, he was a Vietnam vet and he, you know, he would get drunk and he would tell me stories and, uh, you know, he, he was pretty open about it. He said, you know, they just kind of turned us on the villagers. We had to, we were fighting villagers for the most part. I mean, it was just an awful situation, just terrible. We had no business over there. Like we have no business in most of the places where our troops are in right now. I tell people, you know, and they get mad, of course, but they've turned our military into a, the New World Order army. Yeah. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're occupying places for the New World Order. Yeah. So, and I live in the deep south, so I'm probably going to get shot one day for saying that. Well, it's pretty. It's been pretty obvious since World War II that the it's the world's. It's you know, you guys are the world's police force now. Right. But it's. What uh, it does, I, it still doesn't jive. Yeah, that, that, like but they work war. in parallel with the globalists, though. There's a, there's a disconnect there as well. So I can't reconcile. That's the, because yeah, because I yeah, I it's it's got to be like you got to start looking at that whole American thing as just being like taking the baton from the British Empire and using World War Two as the fucking catalyst to do it to you know how else do you get how else do you convince a bunch of people to start building fucking attack helicopters and nuclear weapons and nuclear subs and aircraft carriers and tanks and guns like a motherfucker and boats to invade other you know all the shit that is in place that america needs right now to police the world you don't get that without a world war ii 
and without right. and without a cold war after that to keep that instigation going when people are sick of fucking all their everyone they know getting killed. So that's what yeah. I think that whole war is just a scam to build that military up so that it can't be fucked with. It, to get it to the point that was the mistake they made with the British empires. It didn't have the firepower uh, everything it required to maintain all those colonies, you know what I mean? So they used World War II and the Cold War to just like build, you know, countless military bases all over the world and stock them full of tanks and drones and guns and everything else. And then they had a war on terror to continue it. And then they and then they yeah. made it, and then they made Israel the corporate the corporate nation. Then they made Israel the corporate fucking shoot shoot off of the American intelligence companies. It's, Israel's like the corporate version of the American military industrial complex. And that's the fucking, probably the last strike for YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't mention uh, the, and they don't mention, mention the, the and name. I'm not, I fucking love Jewish people. My, one of my, right. you know, one of my mentors. Yeah. But it's nothing to do with that. When I say Israel, I'm not saying anything against Jewish people. Nothing. Right. I'm saying Israel Absolutely. is a scam. Well, the other thing, I mean, that, that comes into, that brings in the Holocaust into oh, the God. thing too. Because they, no, they don't talk about the, they don't talk the about Russians, 30 right? million How? Russians that died. 25 million civilians and 5 million soldiers died defeating the Nazis. We don't worry about that. Yeah. The one, the one Western front, right? Or the yeah, Eastern front, the Eastern front, the one front. We also didn't bother going into Europe. D-Day doesn't happen until the Soviets have already made it abundantly clear. They've already taken back all of their territory, and now they're pushing into new territory, and now we need to have a D-Day. Two years after we said we were going to Europe first. We didn't actually worry about Europe until it became abundantly clear that the Nazis were not going to defeat the Russians. That's the last piece of my argument. So were the Russians going to take over that part of Europe then? Or would like if that's we what I'm have, if we about wouldn't about. have honestly, I think there's a real chance that if the Allies wouldn't have taken that's met the them in Berlin, right. the Soviets yeah. might have ran rimshot over all of Europe. I mean, Khan, Genghis Khan did it. They were definitely poised to. They could have. There's no saying they weren't gonna, and there's no saying that we didn't know damn well they were gonna do because we knew they were the fucking target from the get go, and they probably had a pretty good idea what was up. I mean, we never really got along that good throughout the whole thing, right? It was always a little bit iffy, a little bit ee. ties in with that Patton interview, and then Patton Patton's like, Patton calls him on it, and they kill him because <laughs> Patton's like, no, no, we got to go to Moscow. I'm like, shut up, motherfucker. <laughs> Not talking about that. Too late. The plan didn't work. We're regrouping for 60 years and getting back to the plan. Because that's the thing. other thing is that these people seem to think in very long term. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I was, I was telling somebody the other day, I was like, look, the average citizen thinks of four years down the road when their next you know, leader is going to be elected. But these elites, they, they're thinking 30 50, 100 years down the line because, I guess because of those elite bloodlines and their offspring, I guess. I don't know, because I can't think, you know, five minutes beyond the today, you know. That's so weird so. you brought that up. I was going to ask you about that because that's something I've been thinking about after reading this David McGowan book and realizing that it seems like they have this long-term plan and strategy. Like, they bring people in to the leadership positions, somebody brings them in, but it feels like it's a long-term strategy. It's not just thinking about the next, the next twenty years. It's beyond that. No, it's so then, I mean, look at so Teddy Roosevelt. He's like think, twenty-seven and he's in charge of the Navy for fuck's sakes. Yeah. How does that happen? Yeah, with no background. After with he disappeared no for a few years yeah. as a kid, I mean, the, like, oh, it's so. So then it makes you wonder: Is this whole reincarnation into bloodlines a thing? Like, then you can get into the metaphysical and the occult side of things, and you wonder. They know about all this occult power and the and the real magic. They're using it against us in a lot of ways, and maybe that's the way they're they're keeping these long term plans together. I mean, it's 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 fascinating to think of. Yeah, you uh, like that book I was referring to, Genesis Six Conspiracy. He he kind of like links all that up to an ancient plan that you know was devised long ago, and. It, 
he kind of lines up, you know, he, he calls himself the Christian contrarian because he's a Christian guy, but he's got, he, he takes all these other different uh, legends from around the world and connects it with the Bible and shows how it all kind of lines up together. But, um, you know, he makes that connection that they planned on, you know, building this utopia, uh, you know, maybe thousands of years ago. But, you know, if you, it also kind of lines up with what Manly P. Hall said in, um, I think it was this, The Secret Destiny of America. He said that the Egyptians knew about the, the lands of North America and would one day, you know, make it their utopia with this one world government and all that, you know, same old, same old stuff. And, uh, you know, he was a great, you know, he, he was a great writer and philosopher. Uh, you know, I don't agree with everything he said, but uh, it, it all lines up, man, that there's been some kind of weird plan. And, I, you know, it's beyond my understanding of how someone would, you know, have that much foresight. There must be something mystical about it. I don't Yeah, know. Yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at. So one thing that can still get me fired up, these okay. fascist bastards. Have you looked into the Tart? Honestly, you know what the worst part of it is? It just affects my friends. That's it. And I might be wrong. I mean, I could be the one that's wrong. Maybe I'm just a crazy asshole. But it just, I'm not pissed off at anyone over it or thinking less of someone because they're a liberal or a conservative or a whatever. So I feel like if I'm wrong, at least I'm not. But why it affects them? Because they think less of each other? Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. Yeah, and man. That's not I, right. It's, you know, I, I made a, a short post about it yesterday, but, uh, you know, Twitter, I hardly ever get on there. And it, when I do, I realize that it just seems to be an outlet to keep people divided. People just get on there and just fight. And most of it's just like the super partisan stuff that really doesn't matter. It's There's not a lot of substance to most of it. And Nothing it changes. just seems like. Yeah, exactly. And people like, you know, oh man, they live on there. They get so upset all the time. Just think of the energy that yeah. people put into politics and arguing and mainstream media propaganda and just what we could do with that the other day. You know what? I was driving Monday. I was driving through this new neighborhood in town to go pick something up off Kijiji, actually. <laughs> and uh, making a second hand no tax sale. Yeah, that's right. Or purchase nice little 60 dollars little train set for the kids anyway i'm driving in and it's all these beautiful houses right they're a half a million each in calgary you know that's like starting price for a single family home that's you know maybe one step up from a smaller one i mean they're huge they're way bigger than you need but that's just what we do here um but anyway you're driving around and i'm just like every second one is a high you know so every two houses is a million bucks and i'm just like I said, so even if I, and I'm thinking, even if I go low and say it takes three houses to make a million bucks, I just drove by a thousand of them. So if they couldn't con us into spending all our money on buying these houses, what could a thousand of us chip in our fucking funds and do? Now, all of a sudden, a thousand of us have $300 million. Wait, did I do that right? That doesn't seem I right. think I did, right? Because if, if, I have, million, if, I, if I have to borrow $300,000 to go buy a house, and there's a 1,000 of us, that's three three hundred million. Am I going to get the calculator out? I don't think so. I mean, this is I'm pretty good at math. So, so, how, if, so if every 1,000 citizens could have $300 million instead of a house that they own, was that, yeah, but I've said 300,000. Yeah, yeah. I just, okay, I okay. just downplayed yeah. it. So I'm just thinking, you know, just out of just out of the houses that people have mortgages on in Calgary, you got maybe fucking ten billion. You could whip together ten billion and fucking yeah, but that's all money that's made out of thin air, and you, if you're all no, this together is the problem. The house, all, yeah, if you don't you have a house, the they're not going to make you the money out right? of thin air. This yeah. is the problem. Yeah, this is the problem. But so what if we just all sold our houses and put our money well, together? Then, yeah, you'd have to do that. Live on a commune or something. We get a commune. We sell the thousand houses. We dotted three hundred million. Take ten million, make a nice little commune. The rest, what are we gonna do with it? Start our own army. <laughs> the love army. They're just gonna fucking bomb this motherfucker with mushrooms. <laughs> what else? Back to the mushrooms. It sounds like a good start, right? 
it makes you wonder, right? Like they guess just we're all so in debt, but if we weren't caught up in that and individualized and everything, you know, it really doesn't take that much of us to have a whole ton of money or not a ton, but enough to maybe do something with. Yeah, man, I've been trying. I wish I'd started when they were younger, but I've been trying to talk to my kids about finding consumerism and commercialism because it's, you know, like we're getting back to libertarian, you know, philosophy. You know, you've got to teach your kids. People need to understand that we're in a, you know, a debt based system and the temptation to go in debt is around every corner. And, you know, Obviously, the schools are not going to teach you to spend your money wisely. So it's crazy, really. Yep. Don't go into debt if you can avoid it at all. I don't even want to talk about it. Oh, it's it's, it's just disgusting. It's disgusting. If you can stay, if you can avoid it, avoid it at all, at all costs. Don't fall for the scam. Right. It's a racket. Everything's a racket. I just realized that the other day. You know, that, that book, War is a Racket. And I was Smedley, thinking... Smedley Butler, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking, you know, I hate to be so negative, but everything's a racket. You know, not everything, but you know what, you get my drift. It's like, there's so many things like that that's just a... Government's a racket for the most part. You know, politics is definitely a racket. The show's a racket. Well, it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just, it, to me, it's more about the court, like... What affects us more is the corporate racket, right? You know the, how the unhealthy, here? the unhealthy food, the unhealthy products, the the stuff shoved down your throat, the the science that's bought and paid for, the the big pharma. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. It it does feel like everything. That's kind of what I want to talk to you guys about as well. Is like, Wait, especially after up, reading I that. I bring up this example. <sighs> so yesterday at work, I've got the old not, not we've got this older fella at work. I don't know. He's probably sixty something, early sixties. But he's sitting there, you know, telling me how war's good because it'll give people jobs. And I'm just like, it's 2019, bro. I was like, I, there's no way you're going to get me to tell you that I think that war is good. There's no, we're not going to get there. I was like, what if it's your grandkids, bro? And he's like, well, I'm not. And it's just like, wow, wow, that's where we're at. In 2019, I can have someone still tell me that war might not be so bad because it'll get everybody working. That's funny because I remember maybe two years ago, uh, I saw a video where Rand Paul was on with uh, Wolf Blitzer, and Rand was like speaking out against our involvement in Syria. Maybe it wasn't quite two years, but it was a while back. And Wolf Blitzer's reply was, "Well, if we we pull out of Syria and Afghanistan and all these places, there's gonna you know, it's gonna hurt jobs." And I'm like, "Did I just hear that right?" Did he just say that we need to stay at war because of jobs? I mean, I know it's true, but you well, know. it's not true. That's not why they stay there. They they stay at war because of the corporate. You know, the corporations are going to make money. It's not for our jobs. It's for fucking. Well, people that are really it's making for, money are you know, supporting both sides. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And the reason we're I, making more money is because a bunch of us are dead, and there's less of us, so there's more money to go around for the peasants. Right. Yeah. Well, I went to. Uh, Washington, D.C. for the first time a few years ago. And the first thing I noticed was there's a humongous General Dynamics in Fairfax, which is like 20 or 30 miles away. And then you get to downtown Washington, and there is another General Dynamics and uh, a Raytheon, like literally, you know, two minutes away from the White House. It's like, how can people not understand that this is a racket? This is the military industrial complex. Yeah. It's, it's everything that the uh, founders w- were against. You know, they were against standing armies even because they knew it usually through history had turned on the people eventually. Yeah. And so, but they think it's all, all this militarism. If you ask the average Joe, especially here where I live, you know, they think everything the Pentagon says is gold, golden. It, you know, even now they're starting to change a little bit with Trump, but, you know, he's so wishy-washy back and forth on foreign policy that you know it could go either way whatever he says they'll go for but he doesn't seem to need he in a way he doesn't seem to need a reason why to pump two trillion back into the military industrial complex like he he seems comfortable just doing it to fucking because he 
says it's outdated and it needs updating, you know, because maybe one day yeah. we're going to really be attacked. Like, I mean, I'd, I mean, I'd rather have it based on a defensive plan than an offensive take over the world plan. But still, it's uh, it's still disgusting. Right. Well, let's yeah. take that two trillion and end like poverty around the entire planet. Just yeah. one year, just mm. one year. No, no new bombs. We'll just all agree. All right. Let's try one year. No war. One year. 365 days, no war. We'll take all those budgets. We'll just try and... I don't know. But these these rackets are falling apart, though. I mean, there is a positive aspect of it. I, the one hidden racket, which I'm looking forward to really crumbling, is the whole money laundering through the uh, NGOs and the charities and the organizations that, you know, we're finding out, <clears throat> like... Not that it's, you know, Biden was the first one to do it, but I mean, the Clinton Foundation was kind of breaking this whole thing down. I feel like that's really why they're so upset right now at that level is because people are realizing that they're just funneling money out of the country. You know, your taxpayer dollars, ours in Canada. I mean, our guys are sending it to all these other places and it comes right back through organizations into their pockets and that's how everybody's getting rich. You know, it's a fucking racket, worldwide racket. Based on, you know, right. that you, fucks us, right? Yeah, you know, I figured out the other day, I spend more in a month on tax than I do for my apartment, my truck, and my fucking food yeah. combined. Yeah, and that, and that, that's what I'm saying. And where does that go, right? Some of it goes out. Goes to kill brown people. And come, well, and some of it goes out and comes back through some laundering process. Yeah. Into somebody's organization or charity or whatever it is. an organization. That's what I was saying. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta check out what source we're in Calgary. We should be, we should have some sort of like oil sands charity organization. We'll get some money from Soros and we'll work against them from the inside. Grimerica GO. Grimerica GO NGO. We better keep Grimerica right out of it. Get it right, right from the Soros. There's probably a bunch of people already think we're shills. We'll work them from the inside. That's right. We'll just fake them out completely. Work it from the inside. That's the plan. That's our exit strategy. I like, like it. Get some, I, get some of that 18 gonna, billion. We'll join the fascists secretly. Yeah. We'll secretly work fascists. against them. That's what I was going to say is when I see a Raytheon lab two minutes from the White House, I call that fucking fascism. Absolutely. What else could it be, man? I don't think the new definition of fascism even says anything about political and, or government and private power. Let's check. Well, that's what was great about his his book there, um, David McGowan's book. He he shows the change in the fascism definition, but this book was written in 2000, so it was like the latest fascism definition in, in the 90s, but it already changed from the 80s. Okay, so here's the latest. And they just latest. scrubbed all the, you know. <sighs> here's the latest. So I, should I not do Wikipedia? Let's do like. Uh, do the Merriam-Webster. Mary, see if it's changed since McGowan okay. came, came up okay. with that. Merriam-Webster definition of capitalism. Or, sorry, fascism. <laughs> Often capitalized. A political philosophy, movement, or regime, such as that of the fascist, that exalts nation and often race above the individual and that stands for a centralized autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader, severe economic and social regimentation, and forcible suppression of opposition. Wow. wow. You have the book there? I do. Because you're it. not going to find the real, I'm not going to be able to find the old definition anywhere. Maybe if I go to DuckDuckGo? No, I think it's still going to be. Uh... <clears throat> do I need to kill some dead air here? So here's the, here's the old uh, definition a system of government characterized by rigid one party dictatorship forcible suppression of opposition, private economic enterprise under centralized government control, belligerent nationalism, racism, and militarism, etc. And then they took out, then they, they came up with a new one in the 1990s that, had, that just said it was a system of government characterized by dictatorship, belligerent nationalism, and racism, militarism. So they took out the one party and forcible suppression of opposition and private economic enterprise under centralized government control. Yeah. They just scrub that part of the, the definition. Part, the yeah. main part. Yeah. 
And then did yours have, did that, did that have it in there, the new no, one? Because no. this was still 19 years old when he wrote this. This doesn't say, so the new definition now is the one I just read you. It doesn't say anything about, uh, anything about that. At least it doesn't say right wing. Well, the one, the, uh, I think the one says right wing. Are you guys worried about your guns down there? Is that uh, a concern amongst you and your peers and all that? Well, it's. I'm worried about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody else is just so <laughs> in love with Trump that they don't even think about it. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm really worried about it. I, it's definitely, you know, you know, that's the goal. Uh, and after they do the semi-automatics, it's going to be handguns. Yeah. And, um, and then, you know, I mean, I don't know. It just seems like all part of the plan to disarm the citizens, you know? You can, you see, can the see writing it. on the wall, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things that, uh, you know, I don't hate Trump, but, like, when he started talking about, uh, you know, he said that one line, take the guns and worry about due process later. and That's a bit of a red flag, yeah. Man, if I, I, the first thing I thought was if Obama had said that, um, there would probably be rioting in the streets of my town. But I've tried to talk to people about the dangers of that kind of rhetoric and they don't even want to hear it. You know, I was called on the Constitu Constitu ugh, Constitution Party with a Facebook group page. I brought that up and they were calling me a commie. <laughs> and I said, I'm defending the Second Amendment. What are you talking about? Wow. You know, <laughs> that's how, you know, brainwashed people are. It's they've just given up on thinking, you know. So friend of the show, Matt. Matt Birnbach in the chats went to DuckDuckGo and the definition of fascism on DuckDuckGo is a system of government marked by centralization of authority under a dictator, a capitalist economy subject to stringent governmental controls, violent suppression of the opposition, and typically a policy of belligerent nationalism and racism. Hmm. So that's not bad. Almost, almost there. Yeah, a little better. Yeah. Take definitions back. Wasn't the original definition of fascism like just a bundle of sticks that's so tightly bound that you can't fit a new stick in? I don't know. And it was like I thought that was, was to say uh, that the idea was that you get them so tightly together that new ideas can't get in and stuff like that, which is the one party idea, I guess. That's where the one party probably came from. You know, it almost seems like I, I was thinking about this the other day. Even though if you ask the average person, they would say, you know, we're more divided than we've ever been here in the United States. But to me, it seems like the parties are closer than they've ever been, except on maybe five or six issues. But, you know, they, they're both big spenders. They're both pro-war. I mean, the, the Democrats voted to give the military even more money than Trump's budget called for. Uh, you know, they're both... Uh, putting us in deep debt. I mean, there's really so many similarities, but they always keep those, that handful that, you know, separate so they can say, Hey, we're different. We're going to help you. We're going to give you what you need. You know, if you look at, the, if you look at the actual legislation though, and the actual direction of the country, instead of what they say, I would argue that that's a real strong indicator that they're not actually maligned at all. It could be, it could be, you know, like, I think when you talk about the, the, like the groups that I, were talk, I was talking about before, like the, the Council on Foreign Relations, if you really look at those people that are, that have been in that traditionally, and even now, it's liberals and conservatives. And it's like, I think at the very top, ideology doesn't matter that much, like it does to the regular people. It's more about just the power and the control. And at least that's the way it appears to me. Does it feel different now though with, with, uh, since 2016? I mean, I, it, it's, it's just escalated to a whole new level of, of, uh, of division and, and it seems more of, a an, uh, microcosm of the, the, the worldwide global fight globalist versus nationalist in a way. I mean, it's, does it feel real, realer to you or does it still feel like an illusion? I mean, especially after reading this, this book, the politics of illusion by McGowan and all it really does feel like, 
you know, it's always been the plan all along to divide and, and it's just one one big party of power, like you're saying. But it does feel like the, it's different. And But Darren would would say, and I don't know what to think, that um, it's, it's, um, it's all part of the, uh, that's what needed to happen now to get everybody to, to um, jump back into jump partisanship. Back into, everyone was a, was everyone was abandoning partisanship five years ago like crazy. I think. I think it was really becoming a thing of the past. I've never in my life noticed partisanship until after. You know, maybe you see little bits of it here and there, but no, not really in my life. Up until I was thirty-five, I didn't really notice. Republicans versus Democrats. It wasn't even something that was in my fucking lexicon yeah. until five, but four that, years ago. But that could be that could be the other. You could look at it the other way and say that is because it's become real. It, it is a be. real fight. The illusion is no longer there that it really is globalism versus nationalism and and Trump for but at all the same his time, flaws and all that. Are put up. a put a stopper in it right at the nick of time. I but mean, at the same time, families are breaking up and people yeah. can't talk to their cousin. You know, and at the yeah. same time, you know. It's worse than ever. Like I said before, my problem with it is people that are getting upset at, you know, stuff like Trump lying, like saying 20 billion instead of 19.75 billion. Like he's not, you know, when you start making shit up like that and getting upset over things that aren't real, then it just, it, 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 it makes it seem worse than it really is. Yeah. I mean, they, uh, they've, you know, the Democrats have, come out against him on so many levels and most of the things are just useless, you know, they're not really serious issues. And the harder they push against him, the more his, you know, hardcore people push for him. And it made me realize, even though I don't think he's Hitler by any means, I can see how these figures are made because, you know, you get this push and this pull and people you know, just go with their emotions and they kind of forget how to think, how to use, you know, common sense and critical thinking skills. And, you know, it's, it's just the, t I guess it's the times we live it's in. It's truly the group think. Yeah. too. Yeah. 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 I'm less and, you worried know, that Trump's Hitler. And I'm more worried that the population is being stoked in such a generation that we're like a decade away from them accepting the hill the you know that person whoever it is yeah, i mean because yeah. i see it on both sides i see it at trump rallies and i see it at bernie rallies oh yeah definitely. i see a 100%. barely fucking nazi-esque vibe to those valleys and i'm not saying anyone's a nazi but i'm just saying politics isn't supposed to look like that and when right. i look through history at the times when politics does look like that it never fucking ends well yes Totally agree, man. You got a couple, you know, when you get a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand people in the street, fucking idolizing cheering you. and idolizing a leader, they, <laughs> yeah. this is not going well, people. Yeah, they're Give supposed to be working for you. Yeah, yeah. Give yeah, your it's fucking head a shake. Both of you. Yeah, I mean, I'm saying everyone. That's the Bernie people. The all of them. It's just you know, it's a it's a politician, and right. Geez. Yeah, and no matter if he was a businessman before or, or like Bernie been a politician your whole life, you, you really can't, you know, you can't trust these people a hundred percent, you know? And if you're putting all your faith in these people, you know, you also got to think about when they're gone, you know, who's going to replace them and what kind of power are they going to have? And if you gave this one leader a lot of power, you know, or put up with a lot of, power that because he was against your enemies the next guy who may be on the other team will have all that power to be against you and i, I think people forget about that because yeah. they just kind of live in the second and i don't know it's kind of it's kind of scary yeah hyper tribalism with a fear of terror seems like the perfect recipe to have a highly controllable public yeah so yeah, and you know oh, i'm sorry no no keep going oh. and i was just going to say um just this is kind of off the subject but it kind of links with it um i was reading that book the report from iron mountain and i thought it was like a serious book i didn't realize that it's you know, i guess since it was put out 
everybody thought it was real at first. And then a couple of years later, the author said, you know, no, it wasn't real. It was kind of like a, it's my take on the way things might end up. But he puts in there uh, that there was this plan uh, by the U.S. government they had as a backup plan in case people ever got too crazy and started rebelling against their government that they would, you know, pull out the uh, alien invasion card. Yeah. And uh, I almost wonder if that's kind of happening well, that's right what, now. That's what I think. This is what I've, I believe that the Trump card, pardon the pun, is the alien invasion. It's the... That's the threat that's going to bring the world together under a one world government is that's what it's yeah. going to be. It's going to be that outside threat. And I mean, I could also think that Trump's space force was to get ahead of that whole disclosure movement, which is happening from, I think the other side of the deep state with the TTSA and making deals with the army and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's what's going to happen. That's where that's, the that's the last ditch effort to bring everybody together. The interesting thing is. Because obviously with everything that's happening in Europe right now, there's, there's yellow vest riots in France still. There's the tractors in uh, Holland and, f and, and Germany now. I mean, people are fed up all over the world and, uh, it's yeah. not getting any easier for the globalists to take over right now. That's their last card. Oh, well, right. usually that means it's time to call the herd. So hopefully they don't go that route. Yeah, it's either that or another war. That's how much. they call yeah. the herd. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. So you know what's interesting yeah, yeah. is that, so if you're right, and Trump's trying to upset the apple cart, or, or, by my theory, or get a handle by on my it. theory that it all goes back to East versus rest, Russia versus us for some reason, right? It goes back to, what is it, the Bolsheviks and the whoever's back in the... And Tartaria before that, maybe. Yeah, I mean, so maybe if it all goes so back far. to that, and Trump's trying to upset the apple cart, and that means he is a Russian. Because by definition, he would be on the Russian side of the the great war that's been going on for a thousand years. Yeah. And maybe, so maybe they're right. Yeah. Yeah, a Russian troll. Yeah, maybe they, <laughs> they, they have deep enough knowledge. They're like, yeah. well, they really are Russians. Yeah. Tartars yeah. are back or yeah. whatever. I mean, yeah. I don't know enough about the names and everything yeah. about yeah. that whole thing, but there's people out there that know what I'm talking about. I was a little, uh, like when he was first running, you know, I was kind of trying to do my research and stuff and I was kind of surprised that he had, you know, taken that big loan for Trump towers from Soros and that didn't get much play. And then he, um, ended up appointing Wilbur Ross, uh, who was the Roth. He worked for the Rothschilds for 30 years and he appointed him to like his treasury secretary or something like that. And that kind of freaked me out too, you know, made me think, is there something else going on here? Some kind of link that we don't know about? But, you know, I hope I'm totally wrong. You know, I hope that he is really who he says he is and his goals are, you know, what people, a lot of people think they are. Yeah. 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 It's, inter we, yeah, it's interesting. Bolsheviks you, you could, versus the Mensheviks. Whenever that, whenever that comes up about him appointing, uh, you know, um, Swamp into his, you know, his administration, I, I feel like there could be the other side of it as well, which is, you know, you do need people from the inside as well that are willing to come out and they, you know, you need people that know how the innards work and it doesn't mean that they're part of that anymore, but I mean, I'm not saying there's any evidence either way really that I believe. I mean, you just don't even know what to believe anymore either from both sides of the media. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The lies, outright lies. I mean, the fact yeah. of getting away with it, it just seems like it's almost um, made up in a way. Um, it's so bad yeah. that it seems like it's made up. It's all fake. Yeah. 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 I have a problem kind of seeing where we're going after this. I just, I can't, I just don't know. You know? We're yeah. continuing yeah. right off the fucking cliff, bro. That's <laughs> Full speed ahead. Yeah. Be the change. That's that's my advice. So, do you got any other like research, uh, any books, any favorite books on the occult or the deep state that you would recommend? Oh like yeah, who, um, sort of who you maybe follow or who you read. There is one book that I it just blew my mind, and it's a really short book, and I would recommend it to anyone who's ever kind of uh, been kind of curious about the Jesuits, because you hear you know in conspiracy circles you hear about them a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's called The Secret Terrorists by a guy named Bill Hughes. Okay. And you could probably sit down and read it within a couple hours. But it is the most precise 
book with all the details and quotes from historical books and whatnot. And I, I didn't know anything about any of the information in that book. So it blew my mind. So I recommend that to everyone. Okay. Um, of course, uh, Daniel Estulin's, uh, the true, I think it's the true story of Bilderberg. I know you guys have had. Yeah. We almost had him on about that book, but something happened at the last second. Twice. He's an elusive guy, isn't he? I don't hear anything about him anymore. Yeah. Sometimes you stay up till two in the morning trying to catch him and he just gets away (laughs) at the last minute. But I digress. That that book and his Tavistock book were just amazing. That's the one I think we were going to have him on about was Tavistock one, wasn't it? Or what was it? Yeah, we had him on in the Bilderberger book. And then it was, yeah, there was. And then we were going to have him on in the other book and and it fell through a couple times. Yeah. Oh, and one more, uh, you guys may be familiar with it, but uh, The Shadows of Power by a guy named uh, James Perloff. If, if you want to kind of delve into uh, the history of the Council on Foreign Relations and all that, you know, Bilderberg stuff, it's kind of a continuation. Or Actually, I think it was before Daniel S. Gillen's book, but it's a great, a great read, too. Okay, good. I'll link to all those in the show notes. And then what about your podcast? Talk about that a little bit before we wrap it up. Well, I just started, um, I'm working on number four and, you know, I'm still kind of working out the kinks and trying to get a system going, but I've yeah. got a few, uh, few guests lined up that are going to be on there. Oh yeah. And You're we'll going to do it, guests too. Cause you, I like the way you started off, you know, like reading some of the quotes and talking about, you know, your opinion on some things. Um, yeah, so far you're doing a great job. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. I, I don't really know what I'm doing, but, uh, Send me an email if you want. You can send me an email with your setup and what you're using and your software and everything. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to help you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll do that for sure. Not that I'm 100% sure I know what I'm doing either, but I got all this shit rigged up in such a way that it seems to work half the time. You guys sound great, man. So I know you know what you're doing. Thanks, man. You're no, uh, you know, no agenda. Not at that level yet, but you're close. Ooh. How, so are you, are you, how dare you? Are you a knight? I'm not, but I, you know, that was one of my, uh, Sir Graham. Awakenings, awakening shows. Dude. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm overboard. A, yeah, I am too, but you know, I still listen every now and then I, I still have tons of, tons of respect for those guys. Yeah. 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 I haven't listened to a show in like four months. I think <clears throat> not that I don't have a ton of respect for him. That's not why yeah. I just, I, I, you got to choose your time wisely. It's man. a lot of it's six hours got, a week is a lot. Yeah, you know, I've only got anything, so much you know. time, and yeah. politics isn't getting fucking any of it. Well, that's media yeah. deconstruction, but you know, it's it still fucking good. stinks like politics most yeah. of the time. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. especially now that it, in another election cycle, it's yeah. I've gone from the abridged to the unabridged version of the brothers Karamazov, so that's going to take me another couple weeks to get through thirty-six hours of melancholy. <laughs> So what wow. what's your plan on your your podcast? What else do you want to do? You want to have some people on? You're going to keep going on what kind of topics and stuff? Well, my next one is actually about the whole um, Rhodes Roundtable and all that. I know it's been done before, but I, it just occurred to me, you know, it's like that should be taught in every history class yeah. everywhere, and it can't be overdone, really. Yeah. You know, I, I, may not, I may not do it justice like, you know, the Corbett Report or something like that, but, uh, you know. I'm going to give it my all. I think it's going to, it's coming out, out. It's coming across pretty good. So good, right on. I'm going to do stuff like that. Just deep, uh, lesser known history. Deep and, go yeah, for. deeper analysis of lesser known history, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the occult at all as well, or that'll always yeah. intertwine with that. I'm sure. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yep. Do you think you'll do it at like the same time every week? I'm going to try to put it out Saturday nights. Um, just seems like a good time for me. And, uh, yeah. We'll see how that goes. We have a yeah. radio network too, so we're always looking for shows for that. If you're interested in that, you know, oh yeah, mention awesome. that in the yeah. email, and you could go live on there and yeah, post your yeah. back catalog. Yeah. And we're always looking for guys for that. So cool. Grimerica. I don't even know if Grimerica.ca slash FM still works, but uh, it's all happening. Net definitely works. Okay. If Grimerica.ca slash FM doesn't work, I'll fix it. But yeah, check it out. So make sure it's not too uh, crazy for you. And uh, if you want in, just let me know. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I I have to say I've I've uh, had a lot of support. Uh, uh, Spore and Hesher from uh, Boiler Room. You know, they sent me a nice message yesterday and wished me good luck on the 
podcast and i was really happy because i have a lot of respect for those guys oh that's great yeah super sweet man yeah we hate them (laughs) i'm just kidding they're great we have them both on i think they're both in the chats too yeah they don't don't come on oh awesome yeah Yeah. Yeah, come in the chats if you want to america.ca slash chats cool okay we'd love to have you in the chat room yep awesome Yeah. yeah and keep up the good work man it's great to chat with you about all this stuff and uh I don't know. It's just nice to have one of these open conversations about, you know, the stuff that we skirt around every now and then. I mean, I really appreciate the opportunity. I really do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll do this again, you know, after a little few months or a year or two, and uh, we'll just give us a little update on where you're at and we can talk about further research and hidden topics. Fantastic. That sounds great. Have you ever thought about getting into Tartaria at all? Um, I, I've heard the. I thought I had gonorrhea. I thought I had gonorrhea there. For, <laughs> wait a minute. What did you say? There's this thing that uh, it's the it's the old Russian state back, and it, it, there's just not a lot about it. But it was like I think it was part of Mongolia, Russia, all that together until not too long ago, a couple hundred years ago. Tartaria. And, uh, Tartaria. I don't know how to pronounce it. Tartaria. Tartaria. Well, it's. Tartary. Pe- people are saying Tartaria or Tartary, but uh, I think it's connected to what's going on nowadays, and it's kind of been scrubbed from the history. I, I mean, that's really the to summarize it. It's pretty uh, pretty interesting. Well, you've piqued my interest. Yeah, I'm gonna. The, Dylan Monroe talks about a little bit on the Master Conspiracy. He's on on Instagram and Master Conspiracy. And the deep state, okay. deep state mapping project and all that. But it, I find like that's something that we, somewhere where we need to go to a little bit more research. So I'll be careful how I uh, look that up. Cause God knows what they'll bring up, you know, some ugly pictures. Yeah. 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 What? I don't get it. <laughs> uh, the gonor- gonorrhea, tartaria. Oh no, no, it's T A R. I'm sorry, man. No, it's okay. I get it. It was good. Oh shit. I lost the stream. Well, buddy, thanks for uh, coming on the show. Thank you. Yeah, we'll link to your podcast in the show notes and all that. And, uh, yeah, good luck with that. If you need any help, let us know. Much appreciated, guys. Yeah, man, it was great. It was a fun chat. Yeah, I knew you guys would uh, you. I knew you guys oh. would get along. I'll send, I didn't oh. say I got along with them. Can you not hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, okay. okay, good, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I thought this was great. We should stay in touch. And uh, we'll do this again sometime. All right, buddy. Thanks. Thank you guys. Have a great right. night. Okay. Thanks, yeah, JR. Thanks. Thank you. Who shot JR? Odd man out. That was a chat with the odd man out. JR Hodge. Is it Hodge? Yeah. Uh, good chat. Thanks for coming on the show, JR. What'd you think? That was fun. Yeah. That was great. Could be kicked off from that, but that's okay. We got to. Get there at some point. We, we like pinged off all the, we, yeah. it was like we just like touched on each subject long enough for you two to be like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Sandy Hook, Vegas shooting. What else do we throw in there? The uh, Holocaust. The Holocaust. Yeah. yeah. Especially oh. being in Canada. Hey, we didn't deny anything. We're I not didn't denying deny anything. anything. Not denying anything. anything. Illegal. Yeah. It's illegal to deny these such things in Canada. And we are good law abiding citizens. Denial. Big thanks didn't to even Matt know for the I am super lying. Chat. Didn't even know I'm lying. Nice. Yeah. Did you just make that up? I did. No, I didn't. I don't believe you. Uh, so yeah, fucking good show. Big thanks to JR for coming on the show. Big thanks to you guys for tuning in, for listening to our lazy ramblings. Uh, we love you for it. You know, the only people we love more than our listeners are the supporters. Those are the guys that pay the bills. Those are the guys that pay our non-existent salaries but they allow us to have a roof over our head and some snacks and some coffee from time to time and we get to do uh we get to keep doing this show this week every week and we don't have to pay for it out of pocket which is fantastic and uh yeah grammerica.ca slash support if you want to become one of those fantastic people that help produce this show and keep it coming every week make sure we make it to episode 500 and then episode 1000 grammerica.ca slash support today Sign up for monthly, uh, review the show, share the show, sign up for the newsletter, spam gram, gramacamerica.com. Other than that, thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. Somehow I built a rocket ship. 
out of the stuff dreams are made and popsicle sticks. Please look at my rocket ship schematics. Tell me it can fly to the moon, tell me I'm not a lunatic. In my hands I have a gas can and mash this Yes sir, this is my home but I need a vacation From all the sadness, the chaos and traumatics I'll let you do the countdown, 3, 2, 1, no hesitation So